course, we're counting down to NC State. Chuck Amato against Indiana. It's just ooh, a few minutes away now at the bottom of the hour. We'll be back. Well, Chris, Chuck Amato was part of, uh, was a linebacker here at NC State in the 60s. He was an assistant coach under Lou Holtz in the 70s. Then he spent 18 years on Bobby Bowden's staff in Tallahassee, where he was part of eight consecutive ACC championships. But after Florida State won the national title in 1999, they lost Chuck Amato back to North Carolina State. And ever since, Amato's been trying to install everything he learned about dynasties here at his alma mater. Well, the Florida State mentality is really uh, something I think everybody in the country wants uh, or would like to have uh, because they're on top of the world. I model everything I do after that program. I know it worked, and I believe it. To instill the Florida State mentality at NC State, Amato surrounded himself with a supporting staff that includes strength coach Todd Strout, a former Seminoles player under head coach Bowden, and then assistant head coach Amato. The gross framework uh, of our conditioning system, how we practice, what we do, has been in place for over 20 years. They were going to do things a certain way, and this is the way we were going to do it, and the players were going to fit his system. And that's one thing I think you'll find about Florida State, and I think you'll find that about NC State. Their rules are very inflexible. Chuck is not going to bend on those things, just like Coach Bowden didn't bend on those things. Work it now, work it. But everyone on the NC State staff knows that this will not be an easy transition. Right now, it's no secret. We don't have the same type of football players as Florida State has talent-wise. But we're lining up and trying to play with the philosophy of Florida State. With his first season in Raleigh under his belt, Amato could see more and more of Bowden in his game plan. When you work with somebody for 18 years, you've got to learn something. And then when, when you work with one of the best, if you don't learn something, it's your fault. Oh, it really is. I like his philosophy of, uh, you know, he's known as a riverboat gambler. And I can see why now. I mean, the first game I went for six fourth downs. I called Bobby up and I said, Coach, you'd be really proud of me. I went for six fourth downs. He said, I can just see him too. He says, that's the only way to do it, boy. You have to do what you have to do to win. And I learned that from him. You have to do it. And, you know, anybody can go by the buck. Uh, I like to go by his book. And after a full season of acclimating to Amato's style and philosophy, it's clear the program is changing, Chris. I spoke to several players yesterday who told me where last season was about finishing games, this season is about winning an ACC championship. But in order to do that, of course, they're going to have to beat Bobby Bowden, Amato's former mentor, Chris. All right, Michelle, Amato, one of the true characters in coaching. He's anxious to see his team not against Florida State, but just get past Indiana tonight. And Chris, we welcome you to College Football Thursday night, presented by Circuit City. And are they ever excited for North Carolina State 2001? Chuck Amato's Chuck Amato is running around the triangle. After eight and four with some touchy landings and last minute finishes, the Wolfpack are set to take off to bigger and better heights in 2001. They put up 79 points and 950 yards in a thriller last year. The Big Ten and the ACC now hook up on Tobacco Road as we welcome you to the start of the college football weekend here on ESPN. Hi, everyone, with Michelle Tafoya, Kirk Herbstreit, Lee Corso, Mike Tirico, North Carolina State, and like every team, lost some folks. They lost their offensive coordinator, Norm Chow. They lost their best receiver, Corin Robinson, first-round pick to the NFL. But the best news for their offense, they got their quarterback back, best freshman quarterback in the country last year, Phillip Rivers. Well, Phillip Rivers last year as a true freshman. He kind of burst onto the scene in college football. He led his team to eight wins, as Mike mentioned. First bowl victory in six seasons. He did it primarily by throwing the football. He threw the ball last year for over 3,000 yards. He had 25 touchdowns. He's worked very, very hard in the offseason. He said on his decision making. He also has gotten stronger. He's 10 pounds heavier. He said he's leaner. He's worked really hard on his footwork. And I got news for Phillip. Every defense that he faces beginning tonight against Indiana is geared to stop him. We'll see how he responds. And I'll tell you what, Coach, speaking of guys that are ready for defenses, Indiana's got their own guys. Do they ever. You know, tonight you're going to see one of the nation's 
most exciting football. Indiana's number 11, Antoine Randall L. Quarterback, slash. Wide receiver, slash. Hunt return, slash. No matter where he lines up, this kid has the ability to score whenever he touches the football. Our colleague, Michelle Tafoya, is downstairs. Michelle, what do you got for us? <laughs> well, Lee Randall L's former backup, Tommy Jones, was ready to transfer to Youngstown State when Cam Cameron found a way to get both of his quarterbacks on the field at the same time. So Jones dropped 30 pounds, and he got himself ready to be the starter. Now, Jones and Randall L room together on the road, and Tommy told me, Antoine's been in my ear all week about what it's going to be like as I take the field for the first time as the starter. But Jones also told me he does not feel pressure to carry this offense he has an offensive line he feels confident in he has running backs he can hand off to and oh yeah by the way he has an explosive new target at wide receiver a guy by the name of Antoine Randall L Mike a pretty good option to say the least Michelle and they are confident unsure but confident Cam Cameron's got to do something he says this is the best talent he's had in four years he's won 13 games at Indiana hoping this year is the year that the Hoosiers turn the corner on the opposite side, it's 55-year-old Chuck Amato, just like Cameron, coaching at his alma mater. He played in the very first game here at Carter-Finley Stadium. Now Amato seeing the stadium spruced up to its best-looking condition ever, and bigger plans are on the horizon. There's no rain on the horizon. Thank goodness. Five years ago today, Hurricane Fran came storming through the Mid-Atlantic region in the Carolinas and caused havoc and damage It's still not made up for tonight no hurricanes no nothing absolutely perfect weather as I mentioned off the top these two teams teed it up in Bloomington last year and what a game 90 or I should say 79 points and over 900 yards but the big story Kirk was North Carolina State coming back from 18 points down to win in the fourth quarter. I think that was so important last year, having a new coach, new coaching philosophies, and early in the year to be able to come back from, from that many points on the road. I think it helped Chuck Amato and his staff bring the team together and really had the players beginning to believe in all that hard work that they had put in in the offseason leading up to the year. Randall L. was a quarterback there. Nobody is sure where Randall L. will be on every snap for Indiana tonight. Quarterback or wide receiver, it is something that is the focus of the coaches and the players for the home team tonight. He just he's so fast, he can hurt you in many, many ways, you know, so uh, he's a guy that you know you can't stop. You can only try to contain him. The most exciting player in college football maybe this year. He, he's, he's about 300 plus yards away from breaking a, the Big Ten record for most total yards. We hope he does it in his second game, but he's capable of doing it any, every time he walks out on the field. Lee Corso, if you were Chuck Amato, how would you plan to find Randall L tonight? First thing I would do is I'd make sure when they checked, broke the huddle, we all pointed to him. There was no mistakes. That's yep. number one. You watch the defensive point to him. If he's at the quarterback position, Kirk and I both agreed before the game that I would put a spy on him. Now, I don't know if North Carolina State's going to do that, but Chuck Amato did not tell us. Obviously, he didn't want us to know. And then if he moves out to a wide out, i definitely put somebody right on his nose, and I'd harass him. Because if you give this guy, Kirk, some open space, he's gone. Yeah, you're right. And, and talking to the North Carolina State players, they want to try to intimidate him. They want to, you mentioned they're going to point to him every single time they break the huddle. They want to let him know that they know exactly where he is. This is the season opener for both teams. The North Carolina State fans, after eight wins last year, believe they can win a conference championship. The Indiana fans, after four wins last year, believe that the offense can turn the corner again. They put up points very easily, 30 per game last year. The question is, can the defense stop anybody? we will get to stop NC State first as Ray Robinson is set to take Adam Brocker's kickoff. And we're underway in Raleigh. Two yards deep. And Robinson will bring it out. And he's brought down at the 17-yard line. So Phillip River from the North Carolina State offense will take over there. The ACC Rookie of the Year through 25 touchdowns last season. On the Bud Light starting lineups, Ray Robinson, who ran for 788 last year. They have a good fullback in Coach Ray Jackson. Peterson has to step up, replacing... The man who moved on to the NFL, Corn Robinson, Jericho Cotchery, four catches last year, and Willie Wright, the tight end, number 80. If you want to watch North Carolina State be slightly ahead of the game, find number 80 tonight. He's going to be active. First toss of the game for Rivers. Down the middle. Caught to Brian Peterson. 
Peterson, the junior split end. He picks up. 14, you know. They say it's incomplete. Ooh. The umpire from the back came through, so our back judge said incomplete pass. Let's check the state offensive line. North Carolina State's offense line is big. The problem is they've had some injuries in camp. Only five practices together in the month of August. So we'll see how they gel tonight. Here's the Indiana defensive front four. This is a defense that allowed 186 rushing yards per game and had only 14 sacks. Kemp Rasmussen, the senior, is the best athlete, has had the best offseason. So that first pass was incomplete. The Big Ten officials working this game here in Raleigh. It is second down and 10. Trickery fools no one. Tried to get it in the hands of Devontae Edwards, but right there to make the play was Ron Bethel, the free safety from Louisville, Kentucky. Third and long coming up for the Wolfpack. They're starting Lee with two backers, five defensive backs. The defensive backs are very active and excellent tacklers, led by number 27, Justin Smith, who last year was a second team All Big Ten player. Nice player, good leader. And up the five DBs, Michael Hanley, a sophomore who returns after missing last year. Wallace is the lone senior, but there are a couple of junior college players that have helped that defensive secondary for IU. Loss of 12 on that play, so this is third and 22. Rivers throws underneath to Willie Wright, who almost lost the ball. Got back to the 14, but it is three and out. And that's the most encouraging thing an Indiana fan could see. That, that's the best thing that could have happened to Indiana's defense. Three and out. You're talking about a defense that last year gave up 39 a game. They were two, they 271 yards through the air. One of the worst defenses in the country. That yeah, was a big stop. I got a stat the for you. I got yeah. a stat. You know this. You know that no football team scored or got scored on the first drive last yep. year. Not one. That's right. Punch to Antoine Randall First time he touches the ball. Got a nice block, made a good move, and has a return into North Carolina State Territory at the 47-yard line. A 14-yard return of a 47-yard punt. So Randall L. will stay on the field, but Tommy Jones is the quarterback. He's lost 30 pounds, thrown only 25 passes in his IU career. With him, sophomore running back, Brian Lewis, a good inside the tackle runner. Number one, Jeremy Johnson, they think is going to have a huge season. Frazier and Randall L. at wide receiver. And Chris Dealman, the junior from Troy, Ohio, who caught seven last year, two for touchdown. Tight end. Randall L. will be bottom of the screen. Jones under center. And here's the new look IU offense. And they start with a big run up the middle for Brian Lewis to the 40-yard line. Why a big run? Lee, they have got a good oh. offensive line. Indiana's offensive line average is 6'5", 305. They're ranked number three in the nation by most experts. They're coached by young Hal Hunter Jr., an excellent young offensive line coach. Craig Osika, the center, may be one of the best in the Big Ten. On the opposite side, the NC State defensive line, Terrence Martin, junior college transfer. They hope will boast of the inside play of this unit. After a pickup of seven, it is second and three for the Hoosiers. And Jones on the hand to Lewis. He'll be right at the ESPN first and ten line. A third down coming up. Some uh, pushing and banging after the play. No flag is thrown. The North Carolina State linebackers. Uh, the linebackers, maybe the strength of this defense. Tremendous amount of speed. And keep an eye on number 44, LeVar Fisher. Last year, defensive player of the year in the ACC. Incredibly, incredibly fast. Will be all over the field tonight making plays. And in the secondary, Terrence Holt is the brother of Tory Holt of the St. Louis Rams. But second team all, all ACC in his own right. A very good player. This is third and short, and Jones is the quarterback. Randall L., a wide receiver. A hand to the fullback, Jeremy Johnson. He's very close to the first down. He made the progress across the yellow line there for the first and ten. So this will be an Indiana first down. And the Hoosiers, with some power football in the early going, move the chains. That's the kind of offense you're going to see when you have Tommy Jones at quarterback. When they move Antoine Randall out to receiver, they're going to run Brian Lewis, number three, and Jeremy Johnson, number one. They really th feel that Jeremy Johnson has the ability to play fullback, tailback, and even the one back, and could be their most gifted running back they have on this team. Jones comes out to the near side as a receiver. Randall L. is the quarterback under center. Perhaps they will run some option here. Pulls out at the 31. Quite a play by D'Antonio Burnett, the junior linebacker 
from Warner Robins, Georgia. What a pain this offense is to prepare for. One of the things that makes their such a great offensive team is their offensive line. 6'5", 305. They've only allowed nine sacks last year. Here's a stat that's amazing, Mike. You know that every back that ran the ball one time in at least one time in 2000 averaged over five yards per carry. Wow. Every back that ran the ball for Indiana. It includes Randall Elva, quarterback, who is now at the receiver spot on second and four. Jones to throw for the first time. First down to Henry Frazier. The senior from Vallejo, California, takes it out to the 24-yard line. It's we haven't talked about Jones, the quarterback. How good's his arm, Herbie? Well, he has a great arm. We watched him in warm-ups, has zip on it, tight spiral. We'll get back there, throws the ball with confidence. Dropped a lot of weight. He, he weighed 260 pounds last winter when he was considering transferring. He's come back. He's dedicated himself this offseason. He's down to about 225, and he can throw the football. And if there's one-on-one -on -one coverage to the outside, IU will try to take advantage of that. Randall L, the flanker at the bottom of the screen. Jones gives to Lewis. 15-yard line, tackled by Julius Patterson, the rover. But Indiana is moving the ball on this North Carolina State defense. You'll see number 62, Myler, number 61, Oakley, come off the ball. They've got nice position. You notice one thing that they're doing is called screen blocking, which means they get up into the face of the defensive player, and they don't try to go down each Kirk, they just get in their face and let the ball carrier that time, Lewis, make a nice break. Well, they sealed them off there, and they, yeah. they're using their strength, too, and just pushing them down inside, letting the back make the read. Randall L is in motion. Flag is down, and so is Lewis. Tackled by Brian Jameson. Mike, that's one of the problems when you move Randall L around to practice time. That time he went in motion and he was going forward, which is a legal, legal procedure. He probably didn't practice that as many times as he should have. Dave Woodcock of the Big Ten, the referee here. There was an ACC crew when they met in Bloomington last year. Cam Cameron is still one of the youngest coaches in Division 1A. It's his fifth season. He's age 40. Three years with the Washington Redskins as an assistant under North Turner. That is his offensive coordinator, Hal Hunter. After the penalty, second and six, and Randall L comes on his under center. Well played the option by Jamison and LeVar Fisher. Right there, North Carolina State. As, as soon as they see LeVar, or they, as soon as they see Antoine Randall get under center right away, their game plan defensively changes. It becomes a little bit more of a base, less movement, a little bit more conservative, and they keep an eye on him. As soon as the ball was snapped, the linebackers took off to the option, and that's what they're going to try to come back with Indiana, maybe with some misdirection or counter off of that. When Randall is in the ball game, you will not see North Carolina blitz because they don't have any support from those linebackers that Kirk just mentioned. This is third and five. Jones out of the shotgun. Five defensive backs, and a marker is down. That may be a delay of game. Prior to the snap, delay of game, fast. Five yards, the down remains third. Kirk. And there are problems also for the quarterback, Tommy Jones. It's got to be hard to get a rhythm when you're going back and forth with different quarterbacks. And remember, he hasn't taken many snaps in his two-year career. Not only that, he's making his first career start, and, and he's trying to get the rhythm going. The whole offense is trying to get a rhythm going. And we asked Antoine Randall, oh, you're okay with Tommy in the huddle running the show. You've done it for the last three years. He said, hey, it's his, it's his job now, and I'm ready to let him take the torch and go. Randall is in the slot, top of your screen. Third and ten. Underneath for Randall it's incomplete. And the North Carolina State now, DBs, you know they're looking at the look, As you guys look at his street play, you'll see what Kirk mentioned about trying to intimidate him. Now, Randall L, number 11, will come across the middle as he does. The ball is thrown high. Watch this guy get a little shot right here. And he... Terrence Holt. 
there. And so, hey, welcome to the big league, sweetheart. Bing. Welcome to the wide opposition. That was almost five yards after the, uh, the ball was gone. He better be careful. 41-yard field goal kick for Adam Brocker. First field goal attempt in his collegiate career. Terrence Holt's a great kick blocker. Wide right. No good. Holt got up high, went down hard, but will come off the field. Indiana not on the scoreboard in their opening drop. Back in Raleigh, each team has had the ball once. Indiana, a better drive, 5 minutes, 14 seconds. North Carolina State went three and out. We are scoreless. So Phillip Rivers will step back under center. Sophomore from Athens, Alabama. All the focus on the changes for the Indiana offense. There's a lot of changes for NC State as well. When you lose a game breaker like Corin Robinson, it's a different game. That pass, the quick hit for Brian Peterson is incomplete. Well, Kirk, the uh, year that Rivers put up was as good as any freshman quarterback you'll ever find. He was able to do a number of things. The thing that I think all of us are impressed with is his poise. Look at the numbers. He's going to eventually go on to break every school record and possibly every ACC record if he's able to stay healthy for four years and stay in school for four years and not jump to the NFL. But you're right, Corin Robinson not being in this offense. Who will step up and be the game breaker? Because this offense has to have that. Second and ten. It's almost like a long handoff to Ray Robinson. Taken out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Justin Smith, the senior from Indianapolis. Lee highlighted him as we came on the air. The second leading tackler on the Hoosiers last year. Like to throw the ball to the outside, try to get the ball to Robinson. It's kind of a glorified sweep just to get it into his hands quick. Last year he had 41 catches, so they, they like that play, and they'll get it out there quite a bit. The one thing I noticed about Indiana automatically right away, they're much quicker on defense than they were last year. Much quicker. Needing to get to the 34 for a first down. That's Cotchery, the receiver in motion. Underneath for Cotchery. He is right at the first down line. Jericho should have it. Sherrod Wallace there on the coverage. First down. First time this year for the Pack. You mentioned the quickness of the IU defense, and one of the things that they said, I, I said, you know, are you going to be a faster defense? They all said yes. I said, is it because of the skill level? They said, no, it's because we're more familiar with the scheme. The second year now, with defense coordinator James Bell, they have a better understanding. You know how when you're a player and you have a better understanding, you play much faster. So it blitz off the corner. The inside hand up with Robinson to the 39-yard line. They picked up about four yards there. There is James Bell, second year's defensive coordinator, and he promises it's going to get better, and it can't get much worse. Out of 114 teams, they were third from the bottom, total yards and points last year. James had a really good reputation in the coaching ranks when he did it at, West, at Wake Forest. Mm -hmm. Did a nice job at Wake Forest, and that's why he moved to Indiana with him. And he said at Wake Forest, the first year they struggled, yes. second year, a great, great improvement. On to a defense that was in the top ten nationally a couple of times that week. Second and six, Rivers rolling out. We'll try to do that more with him this year. To the 46-yard line, first down. Joseph Gray making his first reception, a 15-yard catch for the tight end. This is where Phillip Rivers thinks he's improved the most. He's worked so hard with, with his footwork and his strength, gets to the outside, and he has the ability now to get to the outside and throw the football. Watch the shot he takes. As soon as he let that ball go, good focus downfield, he got drilled into the ground by Rasmussen. Joseph Gray's reception moves the Wolf back into Hoosier territory for the first time tonight. Robinson. A lot of white shirts waiting for him, including Justin Smith, second and nine ahead. One thing about Phillip Rivers in that situation, he got hit. Remember yesterday in our meeting when Chuck Amato said that he got hit 200 times last year. And that's why he went and got this great quarterback from Florida. He said, the kid, if he gets 200 times every year, he ain't going to be here at the end of the year. He's going to need a red shirt. He's going to need a red shirt, red shirt heel of the heel. I thought that was a great line by Amato, but it's true. They've got to do something to protect that kid. Second down and 10. Good protection. Pass complete to Coach Ray Jackson, who took a heavy shot from Ron Bethel, the free safety. 
as he was tangled underneath with Sherrod Wallace. You talk about the 200 hits that Rivers took when you mm -hmm. average that out that's 19 a game that's about five a quarter. That, that's a lot of shots to take. You keep yeah. coming back. You're right. Talk to his quarterback coach Mike Canales and he said what they watch is hit. I mean he gets leveled. Ball is right on the money. Great focus downfield. Coach Canales, his new quarterback coach, said last year about 18, 19 times a game you were hit. This year we won it about five times. There's one. <laughs> Let's keep Mark track of one. Third and nine. Four in the pattern for River. Touchdown to the 23 to Brian Peterson. Quarterback. Indiana's sitting back in a zone defense. There's some holes in this zone defense, and this is the experience of Rivers along with Peterson. He sits back just ahead of the defender, Gonzalez, and that's a nice throw there. Big throw by Phillip Rivers. Doesn't look pretty, but it's there on time. Once it leaves his hand, it's pretty. It's good call. <laughs> back on the move. First and ten, NC State. couple they move into the red zone at the 19 yard line well another college football game coming up for you the 80 million of you who have ESPN 2 can see Texas A&M visit the plains of Wyoming to face the Cowboys our pal Vic Coding got win one right out of the gate to start the season Mark Farris leads the Aggies you'll see it at 10 Eastern on ESPN 2 as college football Thursday presented by Circuit City continues with doubleheader action tonight Rivers adjust the second and seven. This is the freedom that they're given at the line of scrimmage to make the check at the line. Taken away. Now he's trying to direct traffic and just throws it away once he got out of the pocket. Some good moxie from a sophomore. I think the Indiana defense may have uh, been moving around a little bit, messing with him. I think he may have thought that he saw man coverage. And as the ball was snapped, Indiana jumped back and played a little bit of a zone coverage, and that's why it wasn't a play there. He made a check to a to the three-step drop to, to take advantage of that man coverage. First down awaits just before the 12-yard line. Wentz, Rivers got away from it. Little jump pass. Point drive for Austin Herbert from the Raleigh suburb of Cary, North Carolina, is blocked by Kemp Rasmussen and quickly covered. So Indiana cannot move down the field and try to pick up two points. So Herbert's first career PAT attempt is blocked. Rivers, the touchdown pass to his tight end, who gained 20 pounds in the offseason. Caps off an 11 play, 76 yard drive. Circus grab by right. And the Wolfpack strike first. ESPN College Football Thursday Night is presented by Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. And in part by America's Dairy Farmers, who ask, got milk? North Carolina State, 6-0 lead. After the block, extra point. We'll show you the touchdown in a second. Here's the Austin Herbert kickoff. It is taken by... A.C. Carter. Nice opening for Carter. He went untouched. He wasn't shocked that he was hit. <laughs> he spun around at the 34-yard line. Nice 29-yard kickoff return. Back to the touchdown, Lee. Keep your eye on number 80, Willie Wright. He does a drag route to the outside. Number 34, Willie Norton, who's a junior college transfer, has him covered, but yeah. the extra time that Phillip Rivers got, and a great play, Kurt, 
gets the touchdown yeah, the, right here. The reason he got the time. Look into the movement yeah. in the pocket. That's what he's worked so hard on yeah. this offseason with his new quarterback coach, Mike Canales. Movement and focusing downfield with his shoulders perfectly perpendicular to the line of scrimmage. Great execution there by Phillip Rivers. A very nice jump shot as well for the touchdown pass. First down run, Jeremy Johnson. A lot of people to meet him after about three yards. Sean Locklear led the charge. Here's Phillip, six foot five. Not only a big guy, but very poised and extraordinarily mature. Very likable guy. Oh, yeah, he is. You know, just down to earth, sit back, and same guy this year that we sat down with as he was last year before all the touchdown passes and all the yards that he threw for. Really, really down to earth. Randall L. is split to the left. They're looking his way. Randall L. is covered, so Jones comes back to Johnson, who is two yards shy of the first down. Third down coming after the LeVar Fisher tackle, and here's Michelle Tafoya. Well, Mike and Sue State used three different scout players to fill the role of Antoine Randall L. while preparing for this game. The most effective of the three was a sophomore named Paul Barber, a walk-on defensive back. Now, you won't find Barber anywhere in the media guide, but he may well have been the most valuable player in practice all week, Mike. Showing them some option, especially, and with a third and short situation, it's maybe what they'll see here. And here comes some option right here. So Jones is off the field. Randall L. in at quarterback. And this looks like Indiana last year lost the ball. Terrence Holt recovers. North Carolina State will have great field position at the Indiana 40. Terrence Holt all week long heard when you see option come up to fill the alley here heads up sees Antoine Randuel makes a big play for the Wolfpack. ESPN College Football Thursday night is brought to you by Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light and by Lincoln Financial Group clear solutions in a complex world. Corey Smith helped cause the fumble that was recovered by Terrence Holt and great opportunity for Phillip Rivers and the NC State offense leading 6 nothing here in the first. Three receivers top of the screen one at the bottom. The quick toss good catch by Peterson but only gains about three yards. Graham. Stop for Simple side adjust there. They, they just uh, didn't have enough defenders once they blitzed on that side of the football. And again, Phillip Rivers, savvy quarterback, able to see that. A good route adjustment by the wide receiver, Brian Peterson. But the defense knows that. So when a guy blitzed, the linebacker, came out. linebacker covered him right good. They want him to throw the ball real quick like that. Willie Wright, the tight end, is the lone eligible receiver, bottom of the screen. This is just one of those long run handoffs to Ray Robinson. Carried out of bounds. Will there be a flag over there? Nope, not thrown as Derek Proper Barnett pass. carried him out of bounds. What, the speed of, the, of that Indiana defense you're well, talking about. One of the reasons why there's no flag over there, I found from the coaching standpoint, it's on the Indiana side. It takes a really strong official to go over there and drop the flag with all those guys around him. Believe me. Get a better chance for the late hit out of bounds on the other side. Just thought it meant Good. Third and nine. Needing to get to the 31 for a first down. This is like pickup offense. It's not disrespectful, but it's kind of happening right in front of your eyes. Rivers deflected and incomplete. The Indiana defense did allow a drive, but two three and outs unless they pick up a fourth down here. Hey, hey! Rivers pass, batted down. Interesting to see what Chuck Amato will do, and now the punt team does come off. Big stop by Indiana. Very good. A big stop after the turnover there. Gave Phillip Rivers outstanding field position. They came up with a three and out, forced a punt. Herbert, who is kicking replacement kicks this year, was the punter last year. 15 out of 59 kicks were stopped inside the 20. One of one in 2001. Out of bounds at the eight-yard line. Very nice kick by Herbert. 
Well, tomorrow ESPN's exclusive coverage of the Bell Canadian Open continues from Montreal. You'll see Tiger Woods, who has an afternoon tea time in Canada tomorrow. Four hours, four hours live coverage at 2 Eastern after today's play. Pretty good looking Thursday leaderboard. Sometimes in the golf business, we say it's a Thursday leaderboard. You have some guys who you don't really know at the top of the leaderboard. Not today. Jim McGovern, Tiger Woods, along with Michael Muir from uh, Duke alum, by the way, Michael Muir, 500. And John Daly won back. Using the hippo driver. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. The first and 10 from the eight. Randall Ells, the quarterback here. Flag is down as Brian Lewis gets a first down at the 22 yard line. Got a head start there. Just Brian Lewis leaving right before the snap. Illegal procedure. And the reason why, the reason why this is happening is because of the, the voice change between Lewis and then Randall L. I mean, I think right now when I'm looking at Randall L. and Lewis, I'm looking at two different kinds of quarterbacks, also two different kinds of voices. And I'm telling you, it's giving them all kinds of problems. Tommy Jones has got one way to talk. Randall L has the other way, and it's giving him a problem right now. Why Randall L quarterbacking down here inside their own tent? Experience. You can't afford a crucial mistake, even though he yeah. just fumbled the football, but he's been around. They said when the ball is going to be pinned deep, they're going to bring Randall L. When they get inside the red zone, Randall L will be a quarterback. quicker especially in the defensive end position Chapman's one of the reasons why but well, as soon as Antoine Randall gets under center we've been talking about scouting reports and when he's under center be ready for the option watch everybody fly I mean fly out there it, it's almost like it's a pass skeleton drill and as soon as the quarterback gets the ball they all drop back into pass coverage everybody is flying to the option Indiana's going to have to mix in either some play action off the option with him under center or try the power game right up the middle and might rip one for a big game. Or a wide reverse. Yeah, something to, to slow him down. Well, they have time to think about it. At the end of the first quarter, Antoine Randall did not catch a pass. Only four rushes for five yards. When he's under center, there are a whole bunch of red shirts saying, number 11, I got you. They've had him so far. 6-0 State after one. I don't know how intimidating that is, but this stadium's getting more intimidating to play in. More seats, a lot of construction. It's getting bigger and better. Second quarter here in Raleigh. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Michelle Tafoya with us tonight. Great to have Michelle. Joining us is Dr. Jerry Punch, works the NASCAR truck race over on ESPN2. Antoine Randall L. under center, changing the second and 14. said touchdown I thought somebody came in and whistled the play dead they may have but the ball came out you could see the ball clearly coming out of the ball carriers here's the official no, the whistle was blown you know I think that's one of the best things I've seen lately with college officials they admit when they're wrong they're committed to they, talk they about get it. together yep. and they say look I saw this this and that and they make a decision I like that better than anything I've seen this year with the college officials and they're gonna give the NC State <laughs> defense a chance to get back on the field <laughs> Chuck. Chuck whose voice is already shot before game one of the season needs to know let's take a peek here real quick yeah. See the ball, there, but he, yeah, he was, he was he's down. down. Yeah, yeah, I saw the one official Great call. call. Great call. Third and 16. Randall got a block from Brian Lewis to buy some time. That pass is incomplete. He did not cross the line of scrimmage. It was his first pass attempt of the night, intended for Glenn Johnson. And now concern for Indiana. 
as they are deep in their own territory and have to punt. We've talked a lot about Indiana's defense and the improvement in speed. North Carolina State's defense flying around and making uh, making the Indiana offense really, really struggle here. Cam Cameron said if he had one concern, it wasn't the quarterback situation, it was punting. Ryan Henry punted last year, but in a tough, tight situation, and State's good on special teams, he was really concerned about getting kicks off. kick blocker Terrence Holt along with Brian Jamison the linebacker both in there on terrific effort with the score 12 nothing North Carolina State will go for two and they'll bring Rivers the quarterback back out their offense is so good for plays like this just to gain a couple of yards the backfield's empty five of the pattern and it was knocked down so the one and two point attempts after touchdown have failed for State. But they lead 12 0 thanks to the punt block for touchdown. Well, Terrence Holt is known for blocking punts and field goals. He has five kicks that have been blocked throughout his career. But I think Brian Jamison, number 20, is going to come right up the middle, get a good push, not give up, get his left hand up just to get enough on the football to put it up in the air for a touchdown. And I think one of the key things with why did he got it blocked is the kicker brought the ball to his belly before he kicked it. He always must keep the ball at arm's length and kick it. You get it off faster. And I'll bet you they saw that in Jackie Sherrill style in the pregame warm-up. And Time last it. week, yeah, he clock. times it. And also, anytime, Kirk, you guys see a guy kicking a ball who takes the ball and brings it back to his belly, block the kick. And he didn't have the normal 15 yards from the snap back to where the punter is because they were back inside their own five. Mike, you're exactly right. Before that point, you said that Cam Cameron mentioned to us last night that of all things considered in this football game, he said his punt team was his biggest concern, the thing that may keep him up late last night. First time in two years that State blocked a punt for touchdown. Remember Lou Holtz's debut on a rainy night here in 99. Brian Williams blocked the South Carolina punt. Corin Robinson ran it back five yards for a touchdown. Tacklers, he's with Ron Williams across the 40 into the 43 yard line. Indiana needed something positive to happen, and it did. So the punt made it 12 0. For those of you just tuning in, it was 6 0 after one. When we go through our ESPN game track, Indiana had good field position but missed a 41 yard field goal in the first quarter after uh, their opening drive. Phillip Rivers caps off an 11 play, 76 yard drive with his touchdown to right with a great catch in the end zone. Corey Smith, the defensive end, number 48, reaches out and hits right there Randall L. and makes him drop the football. A lot of these mistakes by Randall L. is because of the fact he hasn't been practicing enough at quarterback. I'll go into that in a second, my friends. Tommy Jones and Antoine Randall L. sharing the quarterback duties in the first quarter, as was planned. It's now Jones under center from the 43. And no room to run for LeBron Williams. The first drive, Indiana moved the ball well, but since then, NC State has taken over the line of scrimmage. Terrence Martin, the sophomore, with the tackle. Some of the momentum in this game, switching with the punt block. See him? See him bring that ball right to his belly? Mm -hmm. That's Indiana. all the time Jameson needed. Yep. Indiana's offense right now, they, they've got to get a spark. They need a big play from the pass game to take the pressure off their, off their running game because the defense right now is just up tight, taking away the, the ability to run the ball. Randall L. in motion to try to get to him underneath. He's covered. Further swing outside to Jeremy Johnson. At 250 plus pounds, goes nowhere. The state defense is really flying to the ball. Jameson in on the punt block, made the tackle. Well, here's an offensive football team that was second, led the Big Ten in rushing, average yards per carry last year, number two behind Nebraska. Cam Cameron makes a, uh, a movement of quarterbacks. I'm telling you from what I've seen right now, 
next week, Randall L. will be back at quarterback because this is not working either psychologically or physically so far. It won't. Okay. Third and nine. Courtney Roby in motion. Tommy Jones. Pass incomplete. Looking for Randall L. I want to say it again before it's too late. Tommy Jones is a good quarterback. He's never won a game for Indiana. Randall L. is one of the most exciting quarterbacks in the country. And they're not getting the ball to him enough. I'm telling you, right now in the first quarter, it's not going to work. Now, I'll say I'm wrong if it's I'm wrong, but I'm telling you right now. Ryan Hamry sees eight NC State players at the line of scrimmage. Seven of them come. The flag is down as Hamry gets the kick away. Gets a wonderful bounce that'll come to stop at the six. We've got a flag to check on the line of scrimmage after a 50-yard punt. It's thrown by the linesman. And it's against the Hoosiers. Perhaps not enough men on the line of scrimmage. So that uh, good punt is washed away. Only six on scrimmage, five yards, replete, fourth down. Okay, let's just look at this game so far. Indiana is beating themselves. They had, um, they were right down at about the 10 or 15 yard line going in. Randall L goes in motion, moves the line of scrimmage, boop, five yard penalty. They have too much time, boop, five yard penalty. Have a punt block, boom. They have this one, backed up to the five, boom, mistakes. Mistakes are killing Indiana right now. This time, all eight come after the kick, and he's got it in a piece of it. This one's a live ball in the air. And I believe Terrence Hope recovered it at the 41-yard line. Brian Williams in there with Jamison that time. Williams, the quarterback, might have gotten a piece of it. I'm going to bring up something you guys probably forgot. I almost did. Remember when North Carolina State blocked five punts in the opening game against Texas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple sure of years did. ago. That's the same North Carolina State, right, Kirk? Yeah, well, you know, I think Chuck Amato, 13 kicks in the last two years. I think he's bringing that Florida State mentality sure. to the special team. Well, That's the first thing they do at practice. Half hour. They spend really? a ton of time on special teams. Beware the knockout punch here. With Ray Robinson across the 40 to the 37. Ron Bethel made the tackle. Here is the second block kick for Ryan Hamry. Again, the pressure is not only coming up the middle, but it's coming from, from every, everywhere. <laughs> that was Williams getting the kick block that time. The senior corner for the Wolfpack. Who in his house when playing video games is a trash talker, but on the field is a quiet guy. Well, makes his impact known and Chuck Amato the head coach is over there with his defensive players who get get it done on special teams again Willie Wright into the secondary into the 24 yard line that's a pickup of 14 yards you could see Philip Rivers right away even before the ball was snapped he knew exactly what he wanted to do with the football even though he had three receivers off to the right, he was looking left, right to the tight end, because this linebacker is showing blitz. The linebacker comes, very simple, vacates the area. It's a big running lane with number 80, Willie Wright, to run into. And you mentioned it before, it's called a hot pattern. For people at home, means that if the linebacker comes, there's nobody to block him. You take the ball, throw it right where he disappears. Perfect call of the hot pattern. A very intelligent player, the son of a coach. There is his dad, Philip Rivers has moved down to Raleigh, coaching a high school here to watch his son. There is Steve Rivers, Phillips' dad, now the head coach at Wakefield High School here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And that is Steve's daughter-in-law, Tiffany Rivers. Philip got married to his middle school sweetheart back in May. First and ten, hand up Robinson, up the middle, ball came free. And I think the NC State offensive line will bail out the senior from Hilton Head, South Carolina. On the bottom of the pile, 
Jed Paulson. A freshman seeing his first action of the season. Johnny on the spot. Or Jed on the spot. <laughs> Good job by the center. Not giving up. Second and five. It's Kachery in motion. Rivers looked at Kachery. Found it. That ball was down, and it's a first down for NC State. We sat down with Philip Rivers, talked to him about his receivers, and of course he doesn't have the big play of Warren Robinson anymore. He said, he, you know what, he likes his group. He thinks that as the season progresses, he thinks that everybody's going to kind of learn their role, but he said that Cotchery is the smart receiver at this point in the season. He really has a good good way about getting open in the zone defenses and finding the first down line, which is so important for, for the quarterback to have a guy like that. When you add Willie Wright to those outside receivers and tight end, you've got, you got some players in there. for Robinson to get that late handoff and Ray was quickly pulled down by Devin Schaefer the strong side backer out of Indianapolis really get the feeling right now watching Indiana's body movement that they're they're dead right now they, they need a spark they need something to happen to try to get themselves back into this football game and a defense may have to provide that spark whether it's forcing a field goal here creating a turnover something to, to get their jazz level up they're just kind of going through the motions out there defensively right now Defensive coordinator James Bell after the loss of four Robinson in the flat got a nice block and got to the 10 yard line <laughs> Justin Smith the linebacker made the hustle play Third and six coming up That's the play of 2001 now we've seen it every week we've seen it every place we've gone Arkansas UNLV Mississippi State, that little swing pass, you'll notice all it is is a little look downfield, throw it off, and as you said before, Kirk, it's actually almost like a toss play, except to throw the ball out to the guy. Well, if, especially when defenses are going to crowd the yeah. box area, it's one way to get the ball to the outside real quick. It's almost, like we said, almost a sweep. Look at the disparity there. But some of those pass plays have the same effect as a run play. Six for a first down, ten for a touchdown. State will try for a field goal. Rivers puts the ball where only his receiver has a chance to make the play. And, and Wright is maybe one of the more gifted tight ends in the ACC. It would have been a tough catch here. This job by the defender to rip the ball out because he actually he actually had his hands on it. Willie Northern, the backup free safety, made the play. So here's Austin Herbert to try the field goal from 27 yards. And he has his first career collegiate field goal. North Carolina State has blocked two punts, one a touchdown, one a field goal. They lead by 15. Likeable North Carolina State quarterback Philip Rivers on the phone upstairs, probably with his quarterback's coach Mike Canales, talking about that last drive. State leads 15 nothing here on Thursday Night Football, presented by Circuit City. We talked about Coach Canales a lot. He's a protege, and his mentor was Norm Chow. Do you know that? Yes, it is. He was Norm Chow's number one guy at BYU. That's how he got this job. Herbert, a high short kickoff is fair caught at the 32-yard line by Rashawn Miles, the fullback for Indiana. Well, College Football Thursday night, we have our weekly poll posted every Monday. Log on to ESPN.com right now and vote. Here's the question. Best coach of his alma mater all time, the Bear at Alabama, Philip Fulmer, now at Tennessee, Frank Leahy at Notre Dame, Newt Rockney at Notre Dame, Steve Spurrier at Florida. Log on to ESPN.com. We'll announce the final results in the second half. Chuck Amato and Cam Cameron, the coaches here tonight, are coaching at their alma mater. Thus the theme for the question. From the 33, Tom Jones is the quarterback. 
There's a good looking toss. Randall L catches for the first time in this game, and he's out to the 46 yard line. 13 yards of the first down, Michelle Tafoya. Well, Mike, we continue to talk about Chuck Amato's Florida State influence on this NC State team. Defensive end Corey Smith told me that the NC State defense watches a ton of film of Florida State's defense, and they want to emulate the way the Seminoles fly to the football. They're doing that much better this season than last already here in game one, Michael. Much better. Their speed is certainly a difference. Speed and depth. When you have depth, it helps with your speed. After the first down pickup, Randall L back under center. A little option toss to LeBron Williams. Delivers the blow at the 45 yard line, and then Terrence Holton Company gets some reinforcements to bring him down, but that's a pickup of about eight yards. A little triple option there by Antoine Randall. Well, that's what we're going to sprinkle in there. <laughs> you triple. love the triple option. I love it. I, well, I love it in an offense that's, that is going to drop oh, back. They're going to win the power the game. Back. There's so many different things that they can do. It's like when Georgia Tech had Joe Hamilton. One time they're going to be in an empty set. The very next play they're going to be in the wishbone running right the triple option. But they did not play Joe Hamilton no. and Franklin. You're giving up on this already. Let's give it time. Uh, we'll see. Second and one. Randall L working underneath. Jones trying to get it to him. Did get it to him. First down at the 38-yard okay, line. Jones did a nice job of hanging in the pocket. Boy, was he locked on to Antoine saying, come on, baby, get free. And he did. Well, he, he needs Antoine Randall to get the football in space. That, that was the whole point of this movement. Moving him out to wide receiver, using motion, moving around so the defense can't isolate him. And then once you use him in motion, move him back and forth. Get the football to him where he can dance around. I said, do you look at yourself as a Peter Warwick? And he said, no. I look at myself as more of a Wayne Corbett type. Wayne Corbett? Yeah. Huh. First and ten. Play action. Randall L. again to the 31-yard line. And this is the way Indiana envisioned this offense working. Again, movement with motion with Antoine Randall, moving him to the other side. And, and right now, they're keeping everything short. They're dumping it underneath to Antoine Randall. But the, the first thing that Hal Hunter, the offensive coordinator, you see the movement. Watch Williams coming, following him in motion, keeping him co constantly moving, and then getting the ball back to him. Hal Hunter told us the key to this offense is making sure they spread the wealth. They can't continue to throw the football to Antoine Randall. They've got to get other people involved. At time, Courtney Roby is in motion and nowhere to go for LeBron Williams. D'Antonio Burnett, the junior, number three tackler on this team last year, made the play. Remember, this is an offensive line ranked number three in the nation. It's 6'5", over 300 pounds, and they can't seem to run the football. And it means that North Carolina State's linebackers, that time, D'Antonio Burnett, is blitzing right in the line. Good play. That and Terrence Holden, and Julius Patterson are way up in the line of scrimmage. That last snap, guys, was the first that Randall was off the field. He's back out now as the slot receiver on third and four. Flag down with the movement. Flags on the play. Third and nine it will be. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, five yards. The down remains third. Now, Coach Cameron is thinking right there. Now, this is another time, and he's making a note of that, that we're beating ourselves. Going the other way, they had the same situation on second down, and now they made a third down. Five penalties, 25 yeah. yards, all procedure penalties. Exactly. The Randall L. watch continues. Jones looked right, came back to Randall L., and that play was blown up. Do you think Terrence Holt didn't smell that coming? <laughs> As we talked about in the pregame warm-up, Kirk and Mike, they're pointing him out. And oh, Terrence Holt did more than point him out. He went to get him. <laughs> <laughs> he went to get him, then he pointed some more. <laughs> oh. And now they have to punch. Now this is an adventure. Oh, that's that's will... the best sign. That's the best sign all night. Yes. Can Randall punt? Yes, he yes, can. Yes, he can. That's what I'm saying. Punter. I know. Punter. Bring him out. Five He's times second. last year, 36.2 yeah. average. His long was 55. He can hit the curveball. Bring him out of here. Does everything. He's drafted by the Chicago Cubs. Hamry gets it away. Shank. That punt went 12 yards.
State takes it over at the 25. Antoine, Mark Mann tonight. NC State is hitting the mark so far. 15-0 Wolfpack. Thursday night football from Raleigh. State 15. IU nothing. Indiana's offense. Just 72 yards in 23 plays. The senior Ray Robinson into the secondary. Fumble. They rule him down at the 35-yard line. Well, the Hoosiers are hitting hard enough to cause the turnover. It's the second time Robinson's dropped the ball in the last six snaps. College football tomorrow night on ESPN. Northwestern. The high-powered offense. The very emotional offseason. How will the Wildcats get going? They go out to the Mountain West to take on UNLV. Trying to bounce back from the loss last Thursday night. You'll see Damian Anderson. 1,900 yards and 22 touchdowns last year. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN tomorrow night. Previews of all of our games at ESPN.com. Robinson almost lost the handle again, but he has a first down as Ray takes it across the 40. Marcus Floyd back up corner in on the tackle. One of the things that happens to a football team like Indiana that has a losing record, you need to get some success early in the ball game or everybody starts to get down saying, same old, Here we same go old. Again. Here we go again. Now, their defense has been playing hard, but they're on the field so much that they're bound to get tired in pretty soon. And I think that's what Coach Cameron is thinking right now is, whoa, we've got to get do something big time on defense to stop them. Peterson across midfield and to the 43 yard line. This offense has a completely different feel this year, and people could say, well, Norm Chow isn't here. I think it has as much to do with the fact that the big play receiver, Corey Robinson, has left. They're moving the ball here, he's finding the seams, throwing the football down the field, but if you look at what he's been able to do tonight, throwing the football, a lot of it's been short and intermediate routes compared to that big home run ball that we saw so many times last year to Robinson. Good numbers so far for Rivers. Averaging about nine in completion. Ray Robinson for three. Dominique Smith, the senior from South Carolina, made the play. And here's Michelle again. You guys were talking about Phil Rivers' footwork. He told me, you know, I'm not a fast guy, but I can really see the difference in my footwork since last season. Still, he said, I worked on speed, but I believe I'm stuck on slow. But offensive coordinator Marty Galber says, look, this guy is for real. He's not just a cog in the wheel. He is our entire offensive machine, Mike. And it shows not just in performance, but in presence around the offices for NC State football. Phillip Rivers is in the room. The whole dynamic changes. The sophomore throws it complete to Troy Graham. Another sophomore is from Central High School, Miami, Florida. And he's just a yard shy of the first down. I think he's throwing the ball with more zip this year. Mm -hmm. You know, he says he's, he's, he's 10 pounds heavier, he's stronger. He's getting rid of that football, and he still has that unorthodox style the way he releases it. But I tell you what. The ball has a lot of zip on it. And one of the reasons you get that with a quarterback comes from experience and confidence. Once you're experienced and confidence, you let it fly. It's like a baseball pitcher. Once he gets that rhythm, it's tough to stop. Third and one. Down Indiana offside. Free play. Take a shot on the wheel route. Hutchery to the six. <laughs> this is where a quarterback gets excited. He knew exactly what he was doing with the cadence. Mixing it up, giving the hard count. He got the defense to jump, and Mike, you mentioned it. Once you get the defense out of the corner of your eye to jump, you see the end jump. You get back there, wait for the play to develop. Worst case scenario, you just throw it up and find out if your receiver can make a play. And that's what he did on the wheel route. And he got caught at Tariq. <laughs> a young kid, 6'1", 194 from, from Birmingham, Alabama. They really like his ability to catch the ball in the crowd, and he showed it right there. Sure did, Lee. 29 yards from that pickup. First and goal, Ray Robinson.
make on the extra point. They try to sneak it for two points, and they do not come up with it. So at 21 nothing, they uh, <laughs> trot out the old swinging gate with the holder, Olin Hannum, who is stopped just shy of the goal line. Ray Robinson, seven touchdowns last year. He's protecting the ball this time. Takes it in the end zone. 2000 was not a mirage. ESPN College Football Thursday Night is brought to you by Original Coors. Nothing beats an original. Second half in Bloomington last year, NC State outscored Indiana 28 to 10. 21 nothing here, so that's a 49-10. The last two halves of football between these teams. LeBron Williams taken down by the kicker at the 31. Let's send you to the studio. Preview halftime and a good evening to Rich Eisen. Good evening to you, Mike. Coming up on the Keystone Halftime Report, you may have heard Barry Bonds made a little bit of baseball history today, and at the same time, Tiger Woods was ripping up the course north of the border in Canada, and also will take you behind the scenes all access with Texas A&M. That's coming up on the Keystone Halftime Report in a matter of moments. Back to you, Mike. Okay, Rich. We'll also see Chris Fowler and company. Look ahead to what's going on in college football this weekend. Jones under center for Indiana. Complete to the 41, and there's Henry Frazier, the senior, his second catch of the evening. You like to see that. Again, try to get the football thrown to another receiver besides Antoine Randall. If the defense is going to focus with two guys, sometimes three guys, on him going out for a round, you have to try to throw to somebody else. Perfect call. You know where Andrew Randall ran that time? Straight up the middle field, and two guys. Everybody followed him. You see him? Clear the area. He followed. Clear the area. Jones is 7 of 10 thus far at quarterback, but the junior's only thrown for 50 yards. Pass is incomplete. Lots of contact, but no flag. The coverage was good for Marcus Hudson, freshman from South Dade High School in Miami, Florida. And notice here, as the next few years go on, you're going to hear more and more Wolfpack players from those great high schools in Miami. Chuck Amato recruited that area heavily for Bobby Bowden at Florida State, and Chuck is known very well in Miami. There's another guy, Doc Holliday. You know, Doc Holliday for West Virginia was a super recruiter in South Florida. He's on the staff as well as an assistant coach. Second and ten, Jones down. Terrence Chapman from Fort Myers, Florida. What's the biggest difference that teams in the ACC will see this year with North Carolina State? They have speed on the edge. Sean Price, number 56, Terrence Chapman, number 11, Corey Smith, George Anderson, the defensive ends. And in obvious passing downs, they try to get as many of them on the field as possible. And these guys can fly. I'm talking 4-5, 4-6, tremendous speed up front for North Carolina State. He just blew past Enoch DeMar, the junior guard that time. So now Jones moves the pocket, fires on the run, incomplete. And they are taking every shot possible at Randall L. I'll give you another stat. You know that offensive line is getting heat up alive? They only allowed nine sacks out of 298 passes last year. You know why? Randall L. Randall L. Thank you very much. Not Thomas Jones. Big difference. Ryan Hamry back to punt again. Whistle blows as a timeout is called by North Carolina State. Preserve as much time as possible here with a minute and 41. What, what, what do you think they're getting ready to do? Yeah. Huh? Maybe go after the punt, perhaps? Pretty good odds. Yeah. 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 Brace yourself. Fourth down. Two punch block. 112 yards. Jamison got through, almost got it. This went straight up in the air. Punter's scared to death. He is. Scared to death. Happens all the time. Intimidate him. That one was 16 yards. Randall L. Punted five times last year. I wouldn't mind putting him back there. I'll know one thing. 
If he drops it, he'll score. And then everybody said, what a coach. <laughs> I'm telling you, he'd pick it up and run around all the wood and score. Oh. So Cam Cameron has to send the defense back out on the field. And once again, North Carolina State's offense, a short field. This is the offense perfectly designed for the two-minute drill. <laughs> Minute 34, 49 yards of real estate to gobble up. Three touchdown lead in your pocket for Philip Rivers. He'll start from under center. Ray Robinson runs. Well, how big is that opening on the right side been? And all night he keeps cutting it back to the right. Seven, eight, how about 15 that time? Well, you, get, you give this offense a running back with experience and, and great vision and also the ability to break tackles, which is what he's really good at. You can see him get in there for a small back, keeps his balance, protects the football, and while Indiana's expecting pass, pick up a big first down with the run. Robinson quick hit is incomplete. Incomplete forward pass. Stops the clock with 75 seconds to go. Sports Center in game. The Keystone Light halftime report is coming up. Great to watch those Barry Bonds at bats live on ESPN and he's, as he chases history and reach some of it this afternoon. Tiger, a good opening round in Montreal and all access with the Aggies of Texas A&M, much like Arizona. ESPN following Texas A&M throughout this season for a special that will be aired this winter. But a little sneak peek as the Aggies get ready for the ESPN 2 tilt with Wyoming that starts in an hour and five minutes. Rivers pass caught by Peterson out of bounds at the 23. First down, 71 seconds to go. <laughs> as you said, Mike, this offense, they look like they're in their comfort zone right now. Some offenses panic when they get under a minute. Phillip Rivers finds exactly who he wants to throw the football to based on the coverage that Indiana is showing. Indiana's not a defense that's going to disguise a lot of coverage, so he got a pretty good feel right as soon as he took the snap, made the perfect throw. He's very accurate tonight. I like the way Rivers is hitting right. <laughs> Peterson, Hodgery, he's spreading the football all around and running Robinson. That's exactly the opposite of what Indiana's doing. Timeout. Clock wasn't moving, but Rivers saw something he did not like and Burns. His final timeout here with a minute and 11 in the first half. I think we ought to give uh, Marty Gilbreth a little bit of a credit here, the new offensive coordinator, offensive line coach. Remember, I think when we talked to him, Kirk, he, he called plays for uh, Chad Pennington, didn't he? And yes, he did at Marshall. It's Marty with the headset on and the white ball cap and those Corso glasses on the nose. You got to have them. Ben Franklin. <laughs> He's 51 years old. North Carolina State has 208 yards of total offense in the first half, and this is exactly what Indiana did not want to happen. It's just all gone bad, and you really saw it from the start. You yeah. feel on the offensive end just permeates the rest of the team. I think when they change the quarterback situation, they moved a guy who's a great football player out of where he should be, and I'm telling you, I did that once in my career, and I almost lost my job doing it, and I'm telling you, it ain't going to work. And I said it. Can you wear your glasses? <laughs> Get your glasses on. Okay. You get the, the yeah, reading glasses. Right. Right. I agree. I, mean, I, I, I agree to a certain extent. I think it's more about whether it's whether it's Antoine Randall, a quarterback, or Tom, uh, Tommy Jones, a quarterback. They've got to be able to move the ball around to some other people, get other people involved to try to spread this defense around. Right now, they're just isolated on one player. We heard all night last night about how great these running backs are, but we haven't seen them yet. They tried to run a little bit. First drive was fine. Since then, nothing. Throw it to him. Rivers, first and ten. Finding space in the pocket. Somehow stayed up and got it to Robinson, who lost the ball, but was able to get it back. You know, I've coached in 100 games like this, and you notice, any every time the ball is on the ground, North Carolina State gets it. Indiana hasn't got a single break or covering a fumble. <laughs> I mean, it's like that. You ever notice they yeah. recover their own, they recover the other guys. Be careful. Olin, Olin Hannum, the backup quarterback, is out at wide receiver. He's all the way up at the top of your screen, but he's going to play some receiver this year. This one comes down to Peterson at the 22. No timeouts left. Clock yeah, keeps running. 30 seconds. And third down coming up. Mike, this is where you're going to watch the poise of Phillip Rivers. Let's see how he's able to run this offense. A little bit of confusion with the alignment. Killing a lot of time right now. Whoa, hello. Whoa, the 
first thing I would do here is make sure that I watch that number 80 wherever he is. Somehow they get this playoff. They watch him score here. It's oh. deflected and incomplete. We have offensive linemen, backs, receivers, <laughs> trainers, cheerleaders. Chuck Amato. <laughs> Coaches, GAs. <laughs> So they will fourth down, final snap of the half, try a field goal. Austin Herbert, who connected on his first field goal attempt earlier, will try from just inside the 30. Bad hold, kick blocked. This has looked like a game one special teams yes. effort. One kicking. One last note for Chuck Amato to take into the locker room. Michael Hanley, the starting corner, made the play for Indiana. Quite a half for Phillip Rivers. 18 of 25, 169 yards. Antoine Randall Ellen company held in check. Indiana just 80 yards of offense. They'll get the ball to start the second half in a 21-point hole, Rich Eisen. Well, Mike, on the Keystone... Uh... Well, so far, it's been all Wolfpack. Rivers and company shutting out the Hoosiers down in Raleigh. We'll be back. Down in Raleigh, just a nightmare for the Indiana punt team. It's Brian Jamison of the Wolfpack making the block here. Hoosiers in a deep hole with 30 minutes to play. Back to Mike and company after this. Philip Rivers leads the NC State Wolfpack back on the field a moment ago, 21-0. We start the second half with Michelle Tafoya, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreit, Mike Tirico. How can Indiana try to find a way to get back here in the second half, Coach? I think the first thing they got to put Randall back at quarterback. Last year, he had total yardage, 321 yards against North Carolina State. Mm -hmm. This year at halftime, 46 yards total offense, including a 14-yard punt return. I think they're in big trouble without Randall at quarterback. Well, you got to find a way to get him the football, but at the same time as we talked about the first half mix it up a little bit yeah. if you're going to be a receiver make sure you get other receivers involved yeah. because this defense right now is keyed on number 11 no matter where he is on the field state kicking off it will be returned by Levron Williams he's had a couple of nice kick returns to the right side but this time NC State is sharp to it and take him down at the 22 yard line for those of you who have not been with us all night let's check the ESPN game track two block punts this one by Jamison, Brian Jamison, became a touchdown for NC State, part of their 21-0 lead. Well, Antoine Randall has been corralled all evening long, whether he's been out at the option and quarterback or out of wide receiver. They've, NC State defense has done a great job. Philip Rivers looks quicker. We talked about this. He looks quicker and getting the ball back a lot faster. I like the way he's playing at Philip Rivers. Randall will start under center. Jones, the quarterback, who started under center in the first half is at the top of your screen. Randall L breaks free. Makes a move in the open field and he's taken out of bounds at the 39 yard line. Here's Michelle Tafoya. Well, Mike, there was great urgency in the Indiana locker room at halftime. Cam Cameron got right up in front of his team and said, we have made every mistake we can possibly make. Do you agree? His team agreed. Then he said, we have made every mistake you can possibly make, and we're still going to win this football game. Offense, he said, we've got the ball to start the second half. We have to score. If we can make it 21-7, to we'll have NC State thinking. Mike? Well, thinking because NC State did it to Indiana in Bloomington last year, erasing a 28-13 deficit. It, even as late as five minutes left in the game. Quick hit is caught and open to the 38 for Henry Frazier. So now a little diversity has moved the field 45 yards in a positive direction. Outstanding play call here by Hal Hunter. They used motion on the play. You're going to move across the field, the decoy. In this case, it's going to be Antoine Randall. And right away, Jones looking off to the right to Frazier. Slides it in there with a quick slant, a pass that he's very comfortable with. Picks up first down yardage. That's great because now that defense has to respect some other players. Julius Patterson missed the tackle. Randall's the quarterback. Jones the receiver. And a quick toss by Randall L. to Glenn Johnson. Sophomore from Florida gets it out just shy of the 30. It's about a pickup of seven. Much better offense here in the second half as opposed to the first half when Indiana just couldn't hit a stride. Just 74 total yards. Most of those came in one drive. Meantime, NC State very efficient passing the ball. And Indiana with two block punts and 
She punts under 15 yards. Gave NC State a short field. And they're lucky to be honest that it's 21 0. Jones, the quarterback, Randall L. in motion. They fake the reverse with Randall L. Try to get Jeremy Johnson to bounce it outside. But the big fullback could not do it. Terrence Chapman, who has a sack from the first half, made the check. See, the Indiana coaches agree with what we're seeing from up here. That time again, they used Antoine Randall in motion. Hand the ball off to Johnson, fake the reverse, just in case that defense is so keyed in on him that they're going to follow him around. But Wolfpack stayed at home, made a good play. Key point here is don't make a dumb mistake like they have on short yardage and take a penalty. Make sure you get the ball in Randall L's hands. Jones out of the game, the toss, and Brian Lewis spins forward for a first down. At the 27-yard line. Livron Williams was the tailback more often last year. Lewis is a better runner inside the tackles, and since you're not running as much option without Randall L. quarterback all the time, Lewis is getting on the field more often than the senior Livron Williams. Twan watch. Randall L. is in the slot. Jones is the quarterback. He faked the handoff, and Johnson moves up the middle to the 25. They fake the motion with Randall L. Well, what has Antoine Randall L. been able to do offensively here tonight? Here's the breakdown. Only thrown one pass. It was incomplete. Has caught three balls. Had the one punt return. Most often has been in the running mode. That has been as the quarterback scrambling. For what, Antoine Randall, Randall Ellis, he's got to be in shape with as much movement yeah. that he's doing, <laughs> the motion. Second and seven, Lewis left side. NC <laughs> State's defense wise to it that time. Corey Smith and Brian Jameson on the strong side make a play. They've been putting Randall L in motion a lot. They might come up with the old ball play that Steve Spurrier used. Remember when they used the guy coming in motion and they hand it to him like a sweep. That wouldn't be a bad play or hand it to him and then let him run the option play like he did a couple times last year. That might be a good call right here. They need to get to the 17 for a first down. And three receivers will throw. Quick hit is incomplete. Tried to get it to Henry Frazier, the senior. Fourth down, the kicking game's been four. From here, it's a 40-yard field goal. Go for it. And they will. As Michelle said, we got to score a touchdown here. Get back in a game at 21-7. Fisher was blocked. The throw by Jones is incomplete. Frazier had a chance to come back, make the play, and get the first down, but did not. And North Carolina State holds on down. Tommy Jones dropped back, looked into coverage. I think he found exactly what he wanted to. He, once he gets back, he kind of throws off the back foot. But look at the coverage and look at the catch. If he's able to hold on to that, it doesn't matter if he gets tackled. He's already passed the first down line. That's interesting because, you know, Indiana has lost 1,266 out of 1,424 receiving yards. That's why they're not catching the football. Inexperience at the position. 54-yard drive is stopped. Ray Robinson starts Robinson. going the other way. He gets about three yards before Dominique Smith. So I think that's their biggest concern this year, whether they're going to move back to having Antoine Randall, a quarterback, or leave him wide receiver. They need to develop somebody else at wide receiver to give that quarterback another option. Our defense are going to do the rest of this season what we're seeing tonight from the Wolfpack. They're going to key up on the running game, and they're going to key up on Antoine Randall, take him out of the game, make somebody else beat you. Rivers was excellent in the first half. What a play off the corner from Michael Hanley. That'll be a loss of two yards on the completed pass to Robinson. That was a nice halftime adjustment by defensive coordinator James Bell. He has the corners playing cover two, which means they're staying right in their area to cover those swing, swing packs. 
Ray Robinson hurt them in the first half of that play. James Bell, defensive coordinator, nice halftime adjustment. Third and 11, needing to get to the 33-yard line. Rivers is nearly intercepted. Brian Peterson didn't turn around to look for the ball. Indiana's defense does its job. Three and out. And Antoine Randall, I am tired of watching him. <laughs> he's, just, he's everywhere. The ubiquitous fifth year senior. Austin Herbert gets away. A fabulous kick. Randall out from the 25. 10 yards to the 35. Because they went to blocks, there was no one there to block the coverage team. Jamison downfield after a 53-yard punt. IU ball when we come back. It's been a pretty picture in the first half for North Carolina State, leading Indiana 21-0. Third quarter of Thursday Night Football presented by Circuit City. It's the season opener. This guy uh, got one of those T-shirts that gets thrown to the fans during a game. It's very nice. Actually made a conscious effort before the game to look like that. Yeah, that's in work public. Work. <laughs> nice look. <clears throat> Jones, the quarterback. A little swing pass to Brian Lewis out of the backfield is five yards. D'Antonio Burnett comes charging in there to join Brian Williams on the tackle. Home Depot coaching adjustment from the first half for the Hoosiers. Well, the coaching adjustments we're seeing actually be done here in the second half, and that's mix the ball up, try to get the ball to some other receivers besides Antoine Randall because of the way the North Carolina State defense is coming after him, and we've seen that here in the first five minutes or so in the, first, in the second half. Indiana is purposely trying to move the ball around. Pick up a five, second and five. Nice bounce by Lewis to keep this play alive and gain the first down. And more. Taken down at the 44. Brian by Lewis Terrence Holt. And the ball carrier. That was a nice call by Cam Cameron that time because of the fact he dropped back looking like a pass for Tommy Jones and then slipped the ball to Brian Lewis on a nice little draw play. Watch the offensive line just take him in what he wants. But the most important thing here is that Brian Lewis uses his vision and makes some breaks some tackles. I like the call because it takes the pressure off of Tommy Jones and that pressure they're putting on him. Slow him down a little bit. You're right yeah. about the movement there by Lewis. Just continuing to cut one, well, one defender after another and just patiently worked his way through the defense. Remember, this, de this offense was a running machine, in large part because of Randall L and the option. But they ran the ball so effectively last year. 17 yards on the last one. Lewis is now in motion. The backfield's empty. Hold on, Tommy Jones. He's hit. The ball's free. And NC State recovers. Sean Price comes up with the recovery. But what a push from Locklear and company up front. North Carolina State brought the blitz from the blind side. So that means when a quarterback is right-handed, that comes from his left. He never sees number 48 coming from the outside. Now, the key thing here, as I said a hundred times before, the ball is on the ground. North Carolina State has got almost every single one of them. Indiana's and theirs. Corey Smith, the senior from Richmond, Virginia, comes up with the recovery. And once again, NC State, great field position to start a drive. Perfect time. Robinson is stopped. Perfect time. After a loss of a yard. Another Derek Barnett play, the junior from Evansville. Kirk, you and Mike, let's watch this. I'm telling you, I've seen it a hundred times as a coach. Watch. He comes down the line of scrimmage. Boom. He fumbles. North Carolina State ball. Blocks the kick. Boom. North Carolina State ball. Comes down. Watch this one. North Carolina State fumbles. Boom. North Carolina State ball. I mean, this is ridiculous, but I'm serious. I've seen it a hundred times. Look. Look. North Carolina State ball. Ball. And this last one. North Carolina State ball. Curse of Indiana. I'm telling you. Rivers in trouble. Gets out of the pocket. The pass was incomplete for Brian Peterson. It's really become a, a focal point with the pass attempts by Rivers here tonight. Again, Corin Robinson, number nine, 
number nine overall pick in the NFL draft, taken by the Seattle Seahawks and Mike Holmgren. Robinson's been slowed by a hamstring injury this preseason. If nothing else with North Carolina State situation right covering a fumble, it's going to change the field position. They're going to put Indiana back on its own 10-yard line if, if they don't make this first down. And now they're going to drive 90, Kirk. No way. Time. Peterson incomplete. Fans looking for a flag, but none was thrown. Michael Hanley in on coverage. Get it better than we can. Got to do something offense. And then we'll get another chance to, but probably with a long field. So Austin Herbert comes back out to kick. For the chance to pin Indiana inside the 20. Hopefully he's not worse. Randall L. took it on the run to avoid having it downed inside the 10. And he gets it three yards to the 18. Pushing and shoving, but no flag thrown. Indiana takes over at its own 18, trailing by 21. The NC State Band serenading this uh, near capacity crowd. At Carter Finley Stadium, 21-0 state leads. Randall L., the quarterback, runs the option. Nine yards to the 30. Terrence Holt, Roger Pollard. Two plays in the last two drives. He's been a quarterback. First down both times he's run the football. Here comes your triple option. Triple right option. down the line. Watch. You know what's interesting about the way they're running the triple option? It's almost... It's not a triple option because he doesn't have a pitch back. The pitch back is getting outside, but he is reading the dive there. The defensive tackle continues to pinch down. He reads it, and he bounces it to the outside, but he doesn't have a man to pitch the ball to. Randy Lowe keeping and getting to the 33-yard line. You love the triple option, Kirby. <laughs> Absolutely. When you, you don't have coaching in your family anywhere, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, no. A, that's a little Friday night high school football. Yeah. A little triple option. Love to see that. To see no, the I've coached all my life. There's no better offensive system ever devised in football than the triple option read. Nobody not, does it better. Not to mention when you have so many other things within oh. your offense, and because the defense can't prepare to defend exactly. it. You need an entire week to get ready to stop the triple option. So if a team is good, well, that's a nice little wrinkle to have. All three of these snaps. Jones, the starting quarterback, has been out at receiver. Brian Lewis runs. It's going to be two yards shy of the first down. It will be third and two. And what's interesting is when Jones is in the game, and you barely have to pay attention to him. He's no threat to the receiver. Barely. He has had not, I've charted it, he's had not one <laughs> single play thrown to him yet. Where's that chart? <laughs> right here. You got I've been watching right here. I've been <laughs> watching. He hasn't had a single thing. Now they take him out of the ball game completely and bring in a football player. They have a guy standing out there doing nothing. Third and less than a yard. spot as LeVar Fisher made the hit on Lewis. Now you see why LeVar Fisher is the ACC player of the year wow. on defense. He led the nation in tackles. Wow. Kirk, watch this one and tell me, is this a great play or what? Well, he's got tremendous oh. speed. Watch him be able, to, look. be able to shed the block wow. and come over and make the play. He looked like one of those Miami or Florida State linebackers. He looks like a Florida State outside linebacker. Then he looked at Derek Brooks. Looking his punting lead. For sure. Hope he drops it, runs it all the way. Antoine Randall, who punted five times last year. <laughs> he, 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 is he is the man. He is the man. He is the man. <laughs> The 25, Hatchery is chipped up at the 33 as bodies go flying in all directions. Best part of the night for Indiana, 36 yards, 8-yard return. It crossed the line of scrimmage. That's why it was the best punt. It's better than that 6.5 net average they had in the first half. Ooh. Hatchery 
brings Randall. I mean, think about this guy. He's he's punted. He's returned to punt. He's quarterback, wide receiver, and option. Gone, and if he he's gone in motion for 700 yards, <laughs> he's I, ran six miles back and forth. It hasn't been productive, but should not reflect negatively on the young man. Oh, no. First and ten. Philip Rivers and NC State. Threw that away. Rivers pass incomplete. State's offense went three and out the opening drive of this half. North Carolina State last year, eight and four. Many cardiac type wins. They re earned the nickname the Cardiac Pack. They trailed in the fourth quarter in five of those victories. Ray Robinson right up the middle and pushes the pile about a yard Ray forward. Dominique Smith at the bottom of it defensively for Indiana. Third down coming up. Well, Indiana's defense, I know they're down 21 to nothing, but here in the second half, maybe it's because you have uh, NC State's offense getting a little bit more conservative, but they, they're at least doing their job. They're trying to get the ball back to the offense to try to generate some points for their team. Really, their defense didn't give up any points. It was right, right. Block the kicks. Block, block punts. Needing to get to the 43 for a first down. Three receivers to the right. And right the tight end releases from the left. Look out, the pressure's on. And Ron Bethel, the free safety, sacks Phillip Rivers. Good job for the defense, Michelle. Yeah, well, in addition to making the halftime adjustments that Lee talked about, defensive coordinator James Bell gave a very impressive motivational speech. He told his defense they could win this game, and he looked them in the eyes and said, pull for one another, encourage one another, play for one another. We're a family. And 3-3 three, three and outs, Michelle, the result of that. And this time, Herbert comes up with the bad kick, and Indiana will get the good field position at the NC State 45. This not a quarter that's heading off to the College Football Hall of Fame in South Bend. Season opener for the Hoosiers and the Wolfpack. Indiana next week plays Kentucky in a traditional rival game. North Carolina State will host Ohio one week from tonight, another Thursday night game. Here, Indiana with its best field position and a golden opportunity. Jones in a quarterback. Fisher blitzes. Blowing up the receiver, Randall L. Antoine, shake it up. And one of his linemen, Bobby Branch, trying to get him to come out of the game. The sin number 44, LeVar Fisher on the blitz. He gets in there, makes the hit. Actually, makes Jones get rid of the ball. And once Antoine Randall makes his catch, he is tattooed there by Terrence Holt. They said last year he got hit hard one time the entire season. He's out of the game. Second down. Slow developing run with LeBron Williams. Goes not very far at all. The rotation of defensive linemen is becoming a factor as uh, now Randall L. goes to the bench to be checked out by the training staff. Drew Wimsett. In here in the second half, makes the play. I think that comes from Florida State University also. One thing Bobby taught Chuck Amato, play a lot of players, play a lot. They keep fresh, but it also keeps the morale high. The more you play, the more better the morale. Wimsatch, the ninth defensive lineman to see action tonight. Third and six. The Randall option is out of the equation for the moment. Fisher with the heat, and Jones's pass is incomplete. I know LeVar Fisher didn't get a sack or a hand on anybody, but his speed and Corey Smith as well made a difference on that play. It's the entire defense, the, the yeah. rotation of the body staying fresh, but also the speed, what they begin with. We were going over the defense yesterday with Buddy Green, the defensive coordinator, and we were going through the personnel. He, every single player, he continued to say, speed. You know, this guy's quick. This guy has great speed. Yes. It was all the way through the entire defense. Going for it on fourth and six, needing to get to the 35. Randall L. still out of the game. Wolfpack showing. Bring and a half dozen. Jones throws. Incomplete. Marcus Hudson broke on the ball, thought he had a touchdown in sight. 
But the NC State defense holds on downs for the second time tonight. LeVar Fisher, number 44, was again after that quarterback all over. I tell you what, I like the idea that... I like the idea that Indiana went for it, but let me tell you something. I've never seen North Carolina State this quick. That's yeah. yeah. it. Really? I mean, I don't think it's Indiana as bad as it. North Carolina State is quicker than I've ever seen them on defense. Here's, here's the other difference. The Indiana offensive line yeah. and backers never and running backs never saw blitz last year because, because of running Atlanta option. Now. And they are being lit up with blitz here tonight. Phillip Rivers back in there. Ray Robinson runs it across the 45. Mm -hmm. Pick up a five yards. Well, we are about 12 minutes away from college football over on ESPN2. We'll see if Vic Koning in Wyoming can handle Texas A&M better in Laramie than what happened last year in College Station. ESPN2's College Football Thursday presented by Circuit City. It's coming up in just in a few minutes. Ray Robinson stops by the Indiana defensive front. There's one thing also in this part of the game. Again, I'm going to say it because it's very important. What North Carolina State is doing here is playing a field position game. Chuck Amato knows that if he punts that ball down to the 20, that they're not going to drive 80. They've only driven 50 yards. That's as far as they've gone. So 50 over here, go for fourth down, did he, did he, back and forth. That's why he'll keep them. The only way Indiana can win this game is to get a good turnover and get it in a score in a short field, Mike. See where they have to go for the first down on third and six. Rivers has time. for Brian Peterson. 27-0 Wolfpack. Herbert adds the extra point. Who will replace Corin Robinson? Brian Peterson was told by the former offensive coordinator, Norm Chow, you got the chance to step up. Phillip Rivers has looked for him tonight, and it's paid dividends. ...to step up and replace Corin Robinson. Had to work hard, and he got help from that man. C.J. Hunter, the new assistant strength and conditioning coach with the Wolfpack, the uh, former husband of Olympic sprinter Marion Jones, three-time United States shot put champ, who has uh, come on here and worked with the wide receivers every day. Brian Peterson's strength and speed have improved dramatically from last year. And boy, did you see the speed of that 55-yard touchdown reception. Kickoff taken by A.C. Carter. He's still with the 27. Peterson, the former high school quarterback and cousin of a good receiver in the ACC at North Carolina, L.C. Stevens, comes up with the touchdown. This is, this is actually just an underneath route versus man coverage. And what you didn't see was the quarterback waiting and waiting and waiting and then shot putting the ball to Peterson and the speed there. That's what they need within this offense without Corn Robinson, the ability to get up the field on a, on a short catch and go down the sidelines and make a touchdown. State caught him in a blitz, and number seven, Hanley, could not cover the receiver, Peterson. Jones at quarterback. He completes the hot shot to Glenn Johnson, the sophomore. Let's go check on Antoine Randall now. Here's Michelle Tafoy. Well, as you can see, he's back in the game. We, they gave us no official word on what the injury was. From what we could ascertain, it appeared to be just cramps. And with the way this guy is playing, you know he's not going to miss many snaps, Mike. Cramps in his bell rung. Hey, he was hit hard. Yep. He made a good point about him not taking any hard hits. He could control when he got down and make a little move last year. Not when you're a standing target as a receiver. 
delay with LeBron Williams. This defense is outstanding tonight. But you'll notice one of the reasons why North Carolina State is over right, right now because they got a 28 to nothing lead. And all the defensive linemen do is tuck their tail, bend that leg, and they go after the passer. And that's one of the toughest things for a quarterback to do is throw the ball when you're behind like this. I agree, but oh. the thing is about this defense, they've been doing this from the first quarter. They've, they've been playing with this kind of pressure the entire game. Because Thomas Jones cannot run. Jones under center, second and 15. Underneath to the back, LeBron Williams and D'Antonio Burnett, the middle linebacker, on a no part of that. Hal Hunter, the offensive coordinator, told us that he has two full game plans in preparation. He said it was like going back to grade school with all your color-coordinated things because he had plays for Randall L. and plays for Jones. Hal Hunter Sr. worked with me at Maryland as an assistant coach, and then Hal Hunter Sr. worked with me at Indiana as my offensive line coach, one of the best offensive line coaches I ever had, and young Hal has taken over his dad's spot. His dad now is a scout for the Carolina Panthers football team. They broke the huddle with 12 players. Illegal substitution. 12 men in the huddle. Five yards. The down remains third. There is no time on the clock, but a difference in college and pro ball. Untimed downs in pro ball. You see a quarter cannot end on a defensive foul. have here should be an untimed down because in college ball it can be on either an offensive or defensive foul where you run the play at the end of the quarter. This is a perfect situation third and 19 to let those outside come and watch. I would not be surprised if they don't get an interception because they've been getting real close to picking that ball off. Well the clock didn't have one second on it. He wound a clock that had zero on it which is brand new to me but end of three here in Raleigh. NC State tonight. Nobody knew exactly what Indiana was going to do on offense. NC State figured it out pretty quick. Coming September 7th, the new. Fourth quarter, State up 28. And just a moment ago, Michelle caught up with Chuck Amato. Coach, yesterday we asked you if you thought this year's team was better than last. You said, I don't know. Your defense is playing great. Is this exceeding even your expectations? Yes. <laughs> and thank goodness, to be honest with you, because we're really sputtering offensively. In our kicking game, I'm really disappointed with that other than the block kicks. But the, the defense is doing it, and we've got 15 more minutes to try to keep that goose egg on the, on the board. 15 more minutes to save your voice. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. <laughs> Is that Joe Pesci or is it just me? <laughs> it might be. You, are you talking to me? Yeah, are you talking to me? me? I'm funny. Huh? Because if you're talking to me, I'm talking to you. How you doing? All set to start the fourth quarter. You see C.J. Hunter working out with Peterson there on the sideline. Offense may get back on the field. Third and 19. Just got to get it and try to make something happen. He's down at the seven. Our official made the tackle. Loss of 23. Randall L. will stay in and punt for Indiana. And it's a fourth down. I think fourth and 42 pretty much sums up the night tonight for Indiana's offense. They'll be so conscious of blocking this, the guy will probably run it back if he gets it far enough. Randall L. gets it away. Fair con by Kotchery at the 40. It'll be a five-yard penalty for the halo violation. Within the six-foot bubble was Marcus Floyd. Can't have a Thursday night game without yeah, halo. Absolutely. You guys had one on Monday, didn't you? Oh, yes. Had this we, course, we had one this morning in the parking lot. <laughs> we have them everywhere. That's <laughs> the part of the deal. The guy was too close to our card. 
Kirk put the flag on the halo on top of halo. the for game day. For those of you just joining us, he has been game track. Antoine Rangel has played everywhere and been hit and not effective everywhere. For the North Carolina State defense tonight, the coaches warned us about the speed, but they are exactly right. They've been everywhere. I like Rivers' movement this year much better than last year. You obviously, he's worked on it like you talked to him about it. Ryan Peterson's 55-yard touchdown, the only score of this second half. State led 21-0 after three, and we start the fourth with Ray Robinson. Running for six yards to the 29-yard line. Indiana's defense last year gave up 38 and a half points per game. We're kind of heading towards that direction, but James Bell's defense has not played terribly tonight. They're not giving up the points. They're giving up bad field position and holding on. The block kicks set up the field position. They had one long touchdown. They try to get him on a blitz, and they caught it man for man, Mike. And that hurt them. But everything else, I think they're playing with a full heart, Kirk. After hearing Chuck Amato, I think North Carolina State, they, they want to score. So they yeah. continue to be aggressive. The senior Robinson. Running over Keegan Weir, number 54, moves forward. And what a story Keegan Weir is tonight. Over the last two years, on opening night, Keegan Weir has broken the same leg against Texas two years ago in Austin and late in the game against Arkansas State last year. Weir came back, decided to stick it out. His pain and his rehab was so difficult, his mom came up from Florida to spend three weeks with him, try to help him rehab last year. His spirits were down, didn't think he was going to play. But this son of a coach rehabbed hard as back on the field here tonight for the season opener. Fernandez Jones tackles Ray Robinson there. You know, the Weir family is down in Florida watching tonight at home. The last two years, they've been at the season opener, and Dad's a coach, and he's superstitious like all coaches are. Yeah. So Ken, the high school coach from Stewart, Florida, said to change the luck for Keegan, we're staying home tonight. So uh, Ken and Kit, his mom was an assistant principal down there in Florida. Uh, be very proud of your son. Get him through the next 13 minutes, and you guys can come on up for Ohio next week. I'd call Chuck Amato and tell him, get him out of the game right now. Second and 10, Rivers, quick hit. To the 15-yard line to the tight end, Willie Wright. It will be a couple of yards shy of the first half. You know, that attitude that you see from where I think is infectious. I think you see it from the entire North Carolina State team. And whenever you get into the ACC, people always talk about Florida State. They talk about which team could eventually be the team to take Florida State down. But I think to be able to do that, you have to have an attitude. Florida State mm -hmm. takes the field every week with an expectation to win football games. You could see it at Georgia Tech beginning. You could see it at Clemson. I think now at Rally here with North Carolina State and Chuck Amato, you're beginning to see that same attitude of expecting to win games. Third and three. Great protection on the blitz. And here is Wright. Touchdown, NC State. For the second time tonight. Herbert adds the extra point. Had one blocked earlier. For the seventh time in his career, Philip Rivers has thrown three or more touchdowns in a game. And for the second time tonight, Willie Wright caught one. All right, Willie Wright, number 80, is right there. As he comes across, watch his man-for-man -man coverage. Number 25, Joe Gonzalez has got him. Now, Wright makes a great play here. Remember, Willie Wright was a wideout when he came here. He's built himself up into a tight end. Last year, he tied with 31 receptions, the most receptions by any tight end in the ACC. He's 6'4", 240 pounds. There's the strength. You mentioned he used to be a wide receiver. Yeah. He's put on 20 pounds of muscle in the offseason, and he's able to break tackles. You can see that he is Phillip Rivers' favorite target. I said, Phillip, every quarterback has that receiver. It's third down. You look to somebody. Who's your guy? Without any hesitation, he said, Willie Wright's my guy. Helped uh, Rivers to the ACC Rookie of the Year season last year. And 
right he's dreamed of being an actor or a star and he's called the rock by his teammates because in his next life or later in this life Willie wants to come back as a pro wrestler <laughs> okay. Kick return to the 21 yard line Willie well, better go up a little bit yeah, he's, he's a big a guy bigger. here on this, this field, but yeah. I don't know about <laughs> that level. Not that level. Not that level. Dan Patrick and Rich Eisen have sports air tonight. Dan's been out in San Francisco visiting with Barry Bonds and back in the studio talking about Barry's move on 60. Tiger won the Bell Canadian Open last year. Good opening round start at the Par 70 course in Montreal. That's the oldest country club in, the, in North America. And we'll talk about Eric Crouch, the Nebraska quarterback. Simply the best. Sports Center after the game. There is a different fever about NC State football. In the last uh, half dozen years, I've been coming down here for Wolfpack games. On the run is Jones, takes a shot at the 27-yard line. Still all the first teamers in there with Antonio Burnett and J.J. Washington, the corner, who's coming off an ACL injury last year, making the tackle. Marcus Hudson ran right through Antoine. That is a miss based on fatigue. 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 They cannot win many games with this offensive system. I said it after the second drive. I'm going to say it again. Cam Cameron's got to go home. Now, this, they're going to get beat in this game. But let me tell you, I lost some games. You can lose games, but you never lose your team. The way you lose your team is to blame them for the assistance. Cam Cameron's got to go home, blame himself for this loss, and turn this thing around. Third and four. I think the impression that anybody's watching this game, I know the three of us, everybody here in the stands, we're going to walk away with is domination from the North Carolina State defense and speed. They have the depth at the front seven. The secondary is coming around, continuing to get better and better. This is a defense that's going to be very interesting to keep an eye on in the ACC because if they can continue to play like this, they'll keep them in almost every game they play. Remember, Chuck Amato is a defensive specialist at Florida State. You ought to know how to coach defense. Four rushing and Randall L gets away. Good pick. Kachari made two miss and gets out to the 42. Jericho Kachari's seven yard return after a 36 yard punt. North Carolina State, very impressive here tonight. Back at NC State, where the Wolfpack is leading Indiana 35 to nothing, pitching a shutout. And you talk about the increased expectations of this Wolfpack team and the players. How about the fans? On Tuesday, the team was greeted on the practice field by a sign that read, Faith, the road to the Rose Bowl begins here. We believe in you, signed the fans. And sprinkled on the field, Mike, were hundreds of rose petals. <laughs> First down run as we change quarterback with Olin Hannum in the game now. Chuck Amato, I think, would advise caution to those fans who were thinking roses and rose bowls simply because Chuck knows that their 8-4 last year was a thin 8-4. They had uh, everything, everything go right for them to get to 8-4. How about the line yesterday? He said, the fans, oh, they're excited. The tickets to sell them out. He said, and now they want 11 wins. He said, you're right. We'll get 11 wins. We had eight last year. Maybe we can get three this year. That gets me to 11. <laughs> He's got one line for everything. KJ oh. Stone is the running back in the game. He gets close to first down yardage. It will be third and short. Antonio Watson made the tackle. You can tell the, you can tell the personality of a coach goes to the team. They're very aggressive down there. You know why he's so aggressive? He was a two-time all ACC wrestling champion. You yep. know that? Right here at NC State. Right here at NC State. I read his. I met his wrestling coach from Eastern Pennsylvania. <laughs> what a tough guy that guy was. Chuck Amato looks like he should be on a Sopranos. Doesn't he? Look at him. <laughs> yeah, he, he does. He looks like a Soprano. Looks does like he got the those, pinky ring on? Oh, he does. He should be one of those hit guys. You know, rub him off. <laughs> 
third and one. But Trey Jackson gets the first down at the 42. Michelle? You guys talking about impressions of Chuck Amato. The media guide includes players' first impressions of Coach last year. They included, he's crazy, he's a big-chested dude, this guy is nuts, I thought he was a hitman. The best one, perhaps, came from offensive lineman William Brown. He said, he is a true Italian, and he reminds me of the movie Goodfellas, Mike. <laughs> well, he's been good for these fellas, that's for sure. He, he was here as an assistant coach when Jim Valvano was the yeah. NC State basketball coach and he said they crossed paths along the way and obviously they were able to hit it off. He said uh, some people around here weren't sure how to take him. He said, well, it's Jimmy V with a Joe Pesci voice. Yeah. It's the way that he was portrayed the first couple of days after he took the job. Coach Ray Jackson with the carry. Let's go back to Indiana. Indiana has a monster, monster, monster game next week against Kentucky. And I'm telling Cam right, Cameron right there, get your offense back to where it was last year. Your defense can play much better. The guys played hard for you. Blame yourself for this one because you lost the game because you're the head coach. Don't blame the team because if you lose the team, you don't win any more games. I'm telling you, I know that. I don't think he, you know, I know you're not insinuating this, I but I don't think he's ever blamed the players in the past and he's yeah. lost plenty of football games. I, I, I think it's a big game next week, but after an entire spring ball, Entire two-a-day session. Now you're going to go back to the old offense. Yeah. I hear you. But what I'm saying is, they need to go out and find some receivers. They need to move some people to wide receiver. Whether it's Antoine Randall or it's Tommy Jones calling the signals, they need help out there to try to help that offense out. Well, I'm going to say it again, Kirk, and I'm going to say it one more time. They're not going to win with Tommy Jones at quarterback in the Big Ten. They think these guys are good. Where are those guys that come up along the way? They got to get their offense back to where it was last year. They averaged 30 points a game. They were tough. No reflection on that young man. He doesn't have the athletic ability to move around in the pocket. He's a pretty good passer, but he hasn't played. And they're not going to win with Tommy Jones at quarterback. They may not win with Antoine Randall. Yeah, but I'll tell you what. I'd rather have my chances with that number 11 at quarterback than number 14. Thank you. Third and seven NC State from the Indiana 39. And Olin Hannum, the backup, his pass is incomplete. You need to get some snaps yep. for Hannum because of the number of hits taken by Phillip Rivers over 200 last year. Hannum's a senior from Ogden, Utah. Actually got some rodeo scholarship offers as he came out of junior college. Was attracted here in part because of Norm Chow, offensive coordinator last year, who was at BYU. Hannum knew about the Norm Chow reputation. And you see he stays on the field as the halfback for this uh, very ugly looking punt by Herbert. They're trying to get Hannum on the field wherever possible. I think that punt was nine yards. I'm going to count them all during this break. ESPN College Football Thursday Night is presented by Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. The alma mater of Bill Cower, Terry Gannon, Dr. Jerry Punch, and John Tesh shutting out the alma mater of Jane Pauley, Dick Emberg, and Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban. Halfway through the fourth quarter on College Football Thursday night presented by Circuit City. Tommy Jones in a quarterback as Indiana will try to get some points on the board. That's Chris Dealman, the junior tight end from Troy, Ohio. Caught two touchdowns last year, part of his seven receptions on the season. Performed uh, two years ago as a true freshman. Actually played some defensive tackle last year as well. well there's Antoine Randall still in the game here with seven minutes and change to go. Jones's pass is incomplete, intended for Levron Williams. No, Antoine Randall's story deserves to be told. Here he is tonight, numerically. He's touched the ball a lot, just hasn't gone very far. And it's not his fault. They've been focused on him all evening. Although the struggles are here, we talked about it earlier, only four players in the history of the Big Ten have more all-purpose yards. This is the freshman of the year in 98, was the second team Big Ten quarterback to Drew Brees in 99 and 2000.
Jones throws to the tight end Dealman. It's complete for a first down. And, and even going back before he got on the field, he was a partial qualifier when he arrived in 97. And he earned his degree just a month ago in sports communications and broadcasting. His parents are very proud. And Antoine said that is what he is most proud of in his four years in Indiana. He got his degree this summer. territory at the 44 for Courtney Roby. First catch for the freshman out of I'll tell, you, I'll tell you how good he is. With 195 yards passing and 69 yards rushing this year, he will become the first player in NCAA history to pass for over 6,000 yards in his career and run for 3,000 career yards. Do you realize how great a football player that has to be to do that? Mm -hmm. On a losing team? Second and one. That pass is incomplete for Randall L. Great stuff there, fellas, but they got to go out, go out and win football games. When we sat down with him last night, he had a, a certain presence about him, almost like, okay, you don't have to believe me, we're going to a bowl game this year. And his teammates that came in to sit down with us last night, they all had an attitude of almost like they suffered through last year. Four losses, late, final minute of the game. And I... You know, when you lose that like that, you work so hard to get started into a new season. Now you're going to start off losing 35 to nothing. They've got to regroup emotionally and try to somehow get their their attitude cranked back up to get ready for Kentucky. Because you could talk Antoine Randall, a quarterback, or Tommy Jones, a quarterback. But this team, I thought, early in this game, got their dauber down when they got down in the game. Jeremy Johnson first down run to the 30. That happens. You know, success breeds success, so, but so does failure. The more you lose, the more you think you're going to lose. Now, I'm saying this. With that kid at quarterback, at least he gives him a chance because such a competitor. LeVar Fisher eluded the block, got his hands on Jones, and the first team defense is still in there trying to pitch the shutout for NC State. Before we uh, we put the debate to bed with Antoine <laughs> Randall, no, no, so, no, 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 I'll let you back in. Just want to make sure to point out one thing. Hey, talk about his getting his degree this summer yeah. and the decision he had to make coming back to, for the NFL. He had the papers filled out; they were in the envelope, and then went to talk to Cam Cameron. Decided not to go to the NFL to come back. Another thing that happened to him this summer: his daughter was born, Ciara DeKalb, at Northern Illinois, where his four-year girlfriend Tasha Beard lives, and they're watching. And he can't wait to see his daughter next week he hasn't seen her since camp started Jeremy Johnson goes down to the 15 yard line it's a first down for Indiana here with 545 as they try to get a touchdown but the point is there's so much football we can talk about winning losing yeah. this kid is a winner and Cam Cameron said it best I've been around a lot of guys at Michigan Redskins Cam's been around the block best player for his teammates I've ever been around and don't want that to get lost in the bad game tonight right and one of the best people yes First and 10 for the 15. Tommy Jones trying to get on the board. Touchdown, Dillman, the tight end. Well, it will avoid the third shutout for NC State against a Big Ten team. And a 70-yard drive against the first team. This was not the subs that came in in mop-up duty. I gotta have one more shot here. Oh, you, you guys can go ahead. You guys can go you through respect, the next few do you, breaks. Do you have respect for Cam Cameron as a head coach? Absolutely. Don't you think after researching it an entire offseason and into two days that he would make a decision that's going to help his team win football games? Yes, sir. And sometimes you make decisions that are wrong. Okay. Adam Brocker. And he made a wrong decision. Okay. The sophomore right. from Punta Gorda, Florida, adds his first points of his collegiate career. As the Brockers are watching, just wanted to let their family see that. And Chris Fowler, what can you add to the telecast right now? Well, we can interrupt the debate for an update here. The Aggies had a rally last week to beat 1AA McNeese State. They're down at Wyoming. This is Nate James, the Pokes' first drive. And fellas, Vic Coney's program that you're so familiar with, up 7-zip. And Laramie, it's rocking right now. On ESPN too. <laughs> How's Chris doing? Right now? How's he doing? He, Chris, shot, Chris has. Uh, I he's shot molding. all three of them cold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you Chris, did, Tyler. How you doing? As always, are you good? <laughs> Chris Lee and Kirk will be in Lincoln, Nebraska for College Game Day presented by Discover Card. 
Saturday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Speaking of a.m., I'm looking forward to getting home back to the hotel to see the halftime with Fowler. Oh, he'll, he'll be, be there. Yeah, he'll, he'll be there. Good. He's a team player. We <laughs> mentioned the game in Lincoln, Nebraska, that you can see in primetime on ABC at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Notre Dame season opener, Nebraska game three in Lincoln in as many Saturdays. A very interesting game, part of a national triple header on ABC. You know, Brett, North Carolina State has called timeout as Indiana has come out for an onside kick. So we'll step aside with five and a half left in our fourth quarter. So what airline are you flying in? North Carolina State 35, Indiana 7. Onside kick coming now for the Hoosiers. Chance to work on this. Oh, bouncing around. Willie Wright got a hand in there. Well, let's see who comes up with the recovery. Oh, Indiana has it. Oh, Wright had one arm on the ball, but Indiana scooped in there, and the Hoosiers have the ball. That could be the first one. First bounce of the night. First bounce of the night they got, and they get it with 35 to 7 with 5 minutes and 22 seconds to go. You, you've had a deal with this lead. Yes. If you score a couple of touchdowns here at the end of the game, as the pushing and shoving continues at the bottom of the pile, Coming up with the recovery was Travis Haney, reserve wide receiver. Do you feel any better as a team to no. score the 14 you know, in the fourth? They know, they know that they got the crap kicked out of them, and they got a little an easy touchdown error to psychologically the other team. But you don't worry about it. You don't lose the team. What you do is you say, look, I made a mistake, the staff made a mistake, or whatever. You guys played hard. Let's go. Forget about it. You, one thing you don't do is get down on them, because once you get down on them, everybody else is down on them. They don't want you to get down on them. And I had some losing, and I had some lo big losses, but I never lost my football team. I lost games. Jones back in at quarterback. Scrambling Jones. Gets six yards. J.J. Washington took him down across midfield. I want to bring up this story because one time we did this situation. We were on the air and a guy in the SEC lost a game and I said, watch him. He comes out and makes all these statements about blaming the assistant coach and the quarterback. I said, they won't win another game for that guy. They didn't. He was gone the next year. Because not only did he lose his game, he lost his team. Second and three for Jones. His hot pass was too high for Haney. A penalty marker is down. Pass interference on Marcus Hudson, the true freshman. Lee, you talked about your Indiana days, and Cam Cameron was a player on your teams as you were at Indiana. Uh, From 73 through 82, coaching the Hoosiers, uh, including the memorable Holiday Bowl in 1979, the victory over previously unbeaten BYU, one of the most memorable Holiday Bowls yeah, of all time. Well, I'll tell you what, that game right there, was that was the highest rated football team Indiana's ever beaten. We went beating BYU in that game. They were ninth in the nation, and we beat them undefeated. And Bell Edwards to this day says that's the toughest loss he ever had because we were so bad and he was so good, and we lucked out. You're Indiana Jet Dance. Black, I like yeah, the nice. Jeff Black. Yeah. I mean, was I, you notice the sideburns? Yeah. They cool were fashionable back then. Look good. That was cool. Gary for a couple Look of cool, minutes. Huh? I want to read you the first entry in the Elite Corso era out of the Indiana Media Guide. September 15, 73. The Hoosiers almost missed the opening kickoff as the team enters the field on a double-decker bus. After warming up in the field house, Lee Corso in his first game leads his troops to the field. Band day festivities hamper the progress of the bus. Illinois beats the Hoosiers 28-14. Well, we got to hit 7-0 and the reality set in. <laughs> Jones throws on the run. Oh, beautiful catch downfield, despite the blanket coverage of Brian Williams. Glenn Johnson comes away with it at the 17. Well, speaking of coaches, our ESPN.com poll tonight involved coaches at their alma mater and who's the best of all time. Well, the internet generation does show us something. 44.7% with Bear Bryant and Newt Rockley second at 25%, despite the fact that most of the web surfers are People who didn't see many Bear Bryant or Newt Rockney games they come through with probably answers that it would be correct even the mind of historians like Bino Cook. Timeout called by North Carolina State as their defense was miscommunicating. Players on the field. We're going to see Joe Paterno try to equal Bear Bryant's record next Thursday night in Charlottesville, Penn State, Virginia. Record for all-time major conference coaching wins.
We'll check our Miller Lite storyline here tonight in Raleigh. Cam Cameron's team has been outplayed thoroughly in the special teams area especially. IU had two blocked punts. One was recovered in the air for a touchdown. Antoine Randall lined up everywhere, but North Carolina State's speed found him. And Phillip Rivers coming off his ACC Rookie of the Year season. Very good. Just picking up exactly where very he left good. off. Yeah, Phillip Rivers. Very good. I think I think he looked better tonight yep. at any point that I, I I saw him play last year. He's quicker. He's making better decisions. He's throwing the ball with more zip. And his footwork, you can see him moving around. All the things that he worked on with Coach Canales, his new quarterback coach, are now coming to fruition out here on the field tonight. From the 17, Jones quick hitter and Jeremy Johnson scores. Penalty marker is down. Back by the quarterback. We'll see if it stands. Tommy Jones took a shot after the snap. You can't call it roughing the passer. Well, I guess you can call it if there is no pass. It's still roughing the passer. <laughs> roughing the passer, defense. The score is good. The penalty will be enforced half the distance at the, on the extra point. 35-13 now. Jones took a shot. <laughs> So after touchdown drives of 70 and 55 yards, they move a yard and a half closer for the extra point. 35-14. See if Indiana tries another onside kick. Why well, they have to. Why not? They have to. Philip Rivers, whose night is done with those impressive numbers. If you're joining us late, he got going early. He did, and, and the big question mark was, how is he going to perform without his talented receiver from a year ago, leaving early to the NFL, Warren Robinson? And here's the footwork I talked about, being able to focus downfield, finds Willie Wright early in the game. They moved him around to the pocket, able to move him to the outside, to the left, and to the right. He doesn't have the prettiest delivery, but he's very, very accurate. I think he's more accurate this year, along with the zip on the ball and the footwork. He's a guy that's going to be tough to beat because of his decision making and his poise. And again, this guy is only a true sophomore. Amazing, amazing the composure he has for being that young. He's also a son of a football coach, which means he's been brought up around the sidelines, been in talking to his dad, and that really does help your maturity and knowing how to coach the game. Well, that and he got married. Something. You're a big fan of that. You think that'll no, help? No, I'm him? not. I, I don't think you should ever <laughs> let a guy get married before the football season in the summer. Onside kick is loose again. Oh, the Hoosiers had a chance at that one, but it bounced back up, and I think George Liverman fell on it for NC State here at the 404. If, if Indiana would have recovered that and hit a big play. I'm telling you, they would have been in the game, it. and I'd, I'd say that I told you you should put that Tommy Jones in there. Julius Patterson comes up with the recovery, the other 32. The onside kick, you try to catch the ball. This He's doing a nice job. It hits him in the chest. Never let it get you in the chest. Try to get the ball in your hands. Hannah. Patterson in it. gets it. That was another nice. That was awful nice recovery. That's twice that Brian Williams has had a onside kick attempt hit him. Penalty marker came down as we had 12 on the field for Bill both Legal sides. Substitution. 12 men on the field. Five yards. The down remains first. Chuck Amato played the very first game in Carter Finley Stadium back some three and a half decades ago. And since then, the stadium has gone from one of the jewels of the ACC to an aging stadium. But now they are really putting some money and support behind this program. And uh, this stadium finally is looking like it's being remade. Carry for just a couple of yards for KJ Stone. There's that building. It's Schaefer. off to the right, the as you've been watching here. A great football facility is being constructed here. That's a $2.5 million Timeout. super screen. One of the nicer looking scoreboards we've seen. And the fans, when they got in here, they've heard so much about this big screen. They were staring at it, mesmerized by it during timeouts. <laughs> I'm going to try to win that Chuck Amato um, truck. That's been advertised yeah. on the screen. A timeout was taken here, as you look at the all plans for the future of 
North Carolina State Stadium. That's the new 100,000 square foot football center like the one down the road at North Carolina. They've got great facilities in Chapel Hill. A timeout was taken and it was a 30 second timeout. And that's a rule change that I was sworn by everybody who said that you'll never see it. Well, it's exactly what happened. Indiana's just getting in the habit of stopping the clock, getting the defense in the habit of trying to do this, turn the game around. They took the timeout. You have the option as a coach to take a 30 second timeout at any time. That's exactly what IU did there. Just so when they're in these situations later on in the season when it really matters, you can stop the clock, set the defense. And they'll do the same thing here. Same sign as back in the basketball, Indiana. college basketball. Cam Cameron should know those signs. He played for Bobby Knight as a reserve when he was also playing for Lee Corso at Indiana. He came in my office one time and he said, Bobby Knight asked him to come out for the basketball team. And I said, Cam, let me ask you something. You want to be a coach? He said, yeah. There's the greatest basketball coach in the world, not in America. You can learn what? You can learn more in one week from Bobby Knight and his style than you can from me in four years. Go and just stay around the guy. You'll learn a lot. I think Cam Kyman is a perfect example of a guy who's always wanted to be a football coach. His father-in-law, Tommy Harp, was a great football coach and now still lives right here in Pinehurst area. Cam Cameron was born and bred to be a football coach, and he's a good one. Ten years an assistant at Michigan under Bo Schembechler. Had him run some option. To the 38-yard line. Up to the bounds there, and Owen Hannum picks up the first down. Michelle Tafoya. Well, Mike, I asked Chuck Amato if there was a general picture of his team he hoped to get from tonight's game, and he said, I want to see if they can handle prosperity. We don't talk at all about last year, but I want to see if they've gotten last year's press clippings out of their minds. And he singled out Philip Rivers. He said, I hope he doesn't feel pressure or the burden of carrying us. He said, this is his team, but there are 21 other starters who need to do their parts, too, and most of them, Mike, have done them tonight. They certainly have, and the reserves who have come in and rotated at the defensive line. Kirk keeps hitting on that point, but Let's not lose that. As you go through a season, the more pass rush you can get, fresh in the second half, the better you'll be in the long run. Stone, another carry. His attitude is, again, Philip Rivers' attitude is amazing when it comes to, I don't think he has the type of personality that will press. Let's say he would maybe come out tonight and not play that well. I don't think he has that kind of personality where he feels like, uh-oh, I bet I, I have to squeeze in a throw. I have to get touchdown passes to live up to what I did last year. He said to me, if I have to hand it off 30 times or throw 30 times, I don't really care. I don't need to live up to what I did last year. And that's a good approach, for, for again, for a young quarterback. Indiana's taking another 30-second timeout here. Chance to remind you that Sports Center is coming up as soon as we're done here tonight in Raleigh with Dan Patrick and Rich Eisen. Talk about Barry Bonds going for number 60 this afternoon, seen live on ESPN as we continue to follow the chase of history live. Tiger Woods in Montreal at the Canadian Open and college football store tonight will be on Eric Crouch. Is he the best in this year where it will take the month of September to shake out a Heisman Trophy candidate list? This is second and nine, and Hannum is keeping. These are all on Hannum's snaps, and he's worked for all summer. So his intensity is right there, and Rivers encouraging the quarterback. We mentioned Sports Center coming up next. With uh, the college football season getting to week three now, full weekend three, some of the storylines starting to develop. The surprise teams like Fresno State, can they handle prosperity after a win in Boulder over Colorado and an electrifying win over Oregon State on ESPN2 Sunday night? Short week. Long trip to Madtown, early start, Kirk. Another, excuse me, Kirk. Another team, BYU. Two and up. BYU, and they're going to Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be a game? Joe Lee done against the BYU offense. I'd love to see that game. And Gary Crouton has uh, oh. put up uh, very high point totals in the first two games. 
It will be interesting. Fresno State, uh, now that everybody knows about them, you, you lose the element of surprise. Right. First couple of weeks, I think they, they slipped up and surprised some people. Now they're on the radar screen. Now they're going to go into Madison, and everybody's going to be excited to see what happens in that game. Not to mention, it's a noon Eastern kick, which is a 9 a.m. kick for them. That'll be, they could be flat. They could be flat that game. On a short week, Coach Ray Jackson carries to the... 22-yard line. The NC State team, NC State team plays next Thursday. Indiana has nine days before Kentucky. Final minute, 39 here. Sports Center on the way. You know, tomorrow, gentlemen, is September 7th. It's always a special day to all of us. ESPN turns 22 tomorrow, September 7th, 1979. First day of ESPN on the air. Hannum runs this clock all the way down. Run with Jackson to the 19-yard line. And uh, those of us who've had ESPN as part of our, the most significant part of our professional lives here for the last, uh, for me, almost half the 22 years of ESPN, uh, thank you to the women and men who paved the way for what we're able to do, like nine college football games last week on ESPN, ESPN2, and the internet, and the magazine, and everything else. What about ESPN Now? ESPN Now, yes. That's my favorite. ESPN News, which relaunches tomorrow afternoon. ESPN Classic. All of those things are new since I was here. I've been here 15 years. 15? There was nothing like that there. It was just ESPN. Congratulations to everyone who's been a part of it. Happy oh, birthday. Yeah. Celebrate for a few moments tomorrow. do it. They'll respot the ball. Clock will run, and I know Chuck Amato will not run another play. The call today here, 35-14. So NC State will win their two games against Indiana in this series. The move to 4-0 against the Hoosiers. Here's Manny Diaz, one of the uh, graduate assistants of this NC State staff. He's done a very good job this offseason getting the Wolfpack ready after 2000 success. A very good 2001 start and Keegan Weir gets through that first game without injury. Our final score State 35 Indiana 14. Malik Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, great to have Michelle Tafoya with us as well. And all the women and men on our ESPN crew, Mike Tirico saying thank you for watching this presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. A&M Wyoming on ESPN2, and right here on ESPN, here comes SportsCenter.